Yo, yo. When I spit bars in a rave, man, I go hard like Santan. Hello and welcome to another episode of Touchline Fracker. I'm joined this evening by a group of uh, distinguished gentlemen, four winners and a loser. Uh, let me go around and introduce everybody. I'll start in order of the time we got onto the stream. Uh, Yao, for some reason, chomping at the bit this week to, to start the pod. I think 7.15 we said, but you were here from 7 o'clock. I saw you typing. I saw you typing in the chat just as I was sending out the link. And the... <laughs> so you've been ready since about... 624. <laughs> You're mute, good brother. <laughs> I said that no, I have. Uh, I literally got the the app like put onto the laptop, had everything set up, even you know, done a little bit of cleaning in the background, you know, so the decor is good because that was a beating at that old rickety stadium. So and I'm very happy, isn't it? Yeah, I'm happy for you. Happy New Year. Uh Dr. Mike, how goes it? What's going on? Work with amateurs this week. You're also on mute. Yeah, I'm literally not on mute. You literally unmuted yourself. You can't. You can't I PhD. You can't PhD mute. yourself. I'm, I'm. 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 I'm not on mute. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. You can't PhD yourself. No, sorry, sorry, Mike. Mike, we legit saw the mute icon. <laughs> Okay, you got me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm looking to tussle, man. <laughs> Evidently, how's it going? Back yeah, to back, well, brother. How are you? How are you? You good? Yeah, man. We're, you, we're used to it. Obviously, in the in the Mugga chat, we're just talking about how how regular these sort of beatings have become to the point that you're kind of desensitized to them. And I think, yeah, it's just Crazy. losing by three plus goals. It's just a bit. I love of it. Had to be you, the, the Ten Hag Garrett. Listen, man. Every dog has their day or not, so it's just a small time. Yeah, man. Uh, I think it was Coogs. Coogs, how are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm very well, brother. I'm very well, yeah. brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I follow you. At all. Even if I didn't speak to you, your timeline lets me know exactly where your head's at. No, I wouldn't say any given day. I'm locked in. Coog, I wake up, get my newspaper, click down, Coogs, scroll down books, just... Mm. A sip of coffee, you know exactly where your head's at. Don't worry, don't worry about that, man. That's that's my that's my Twitter persona, yeah. My ex persona, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, we also... got to keep missing. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Keep them on their toes, and but also joined by Babs, who at one point didn't know who was on the pod, and then when Cole Palmer scored four goals, suddenly was available for the pod. Good to have you on, brother. Hey, man, it's good to be on, man. I just thought, you know. Almost like that, just led to the prayers. I just had to make sure that there was somebody on to represent the greatness that was Cole Palmas. I just had to make sure my presence was felt. I'm sure you guys would appreciate it. Yeah. No? The silence says so I actually have no idea what kind of response you're expecting there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know either. I don't know either, bro. Oh, my God. Uh, we're, we're in game week six of, of this season's Premier League. Uh, we're going to go around, do what we do, review the games, talk about what worked, what didn't work. People are going to get their agendas off. People are going to defend themselves as best as they can. We'll laugh and we'll finish and we'll all still be friends. Uh, let's start with a game of the week. Big game, Manchester United versus Tottenham Hotspurs at Old Trafford, 4.30 Sunday. All eyes on me kickoff. Um, I wouldn't be a gracious host if I didn't give you the platform. Yeah, you cleaned your background and everything. So, um, yeah, take it away, Claire. Oh, man. Where do I start? Brad up. First thing I'm going to say is, yeah, United need to make sure that they keep Ten Hag for the remainder of the season because I, I believe every other club deserves a chance to come to Old Trafford and clean up. Like, there's no harm in changing the manager and giving a tussle and all that kind of stuff. Do the right thing for the league. Let other teams like Crystal Palace come over there and slap you up a couple of goals and stuff like that. Because this game started exactly how I expected it to start. Quick and fast. But let me tell you something very quickly. Mickey. Van der Ven, that has to be one of the nastiest opening goals I've ever seen in my life. Because I don't understand why man were near him, but didn't get near him. He wasn't even running at full speed. 
Man literally stood. I saw Gatti juke forward and juke back. This ain't NFL, bruv. This is football. Tackle, man. Like, you actually have to make a tackle. Man juked and juked back like he had the ball. Mm. I appreciate the fact that, you know, United have history. Old Trafford is the fear of dreams. Fear of shit, as far as I'm concerned. But, <clears throat> listen, that first goal, to allow Johnson to get his fourth in four, nasty business. And to be yeah. honest, the yeah, way he was going, Timo Werner could have done something, but we all know he's absolutely garbage. So, you might should be more thanking God that Team of Werner done nothing. He's absolutely shit. Mm. Random question off the top of my head. Can we all go around our favourite memory of our team winning a trophy? Um, I'm going to start with you. Oh, man. man said reloading. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that oh is my nasty. God. That is nasty. Man. Oh, my God. He said, oh. he said, I'm not, he said, yo, 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 he said, I'm not going to just sit here and just, take yeah, this. Yeah, you did a lot. You did a lot, my guy. You did a lot. Come brother. I'm going to put it in your way. The joke, oh, the joke inside, um, like I said to you guys before the pod started, from my perspective, didn't go into the game particularly confident. We just aren't a particularly good side. I think we, like you said, yeah, our early game of the season, we haven't played the most stellar of teams. We've struggled to <laughs> create chances and we've struggled to really look particularly cohesive. So anytime we're up against a team with a handful of good players, you, you've got to be worried that they're going to cause you issues. And that Van, Ven, <laughs> that Van der Ven run is not too dissimilar from the run we saw from the guy from FC20 midweek, where he was able to explode um, with pace and power, PMP through the midfield. Nobody lays a hand on him, and then he's able to just lay it on the plate for Brennan Johnson. Four and four after being dissed, Yao, what's the lesson for us? Uh, continue to diss these players because, you know, that's how they step up to the plate. Look, look I don't come from the generation of you don't get insulted, bro. So... Man deleted his, his, you know, thing. I know people are going to come in and be that like, we don't, you know, participate in bullying and stuff like that. Well, mm. ladies and gentlemen, bullying mm. works in this case. So I don't know what you really want me to say. Yeah. Like, man got taken off internet, scored four goals in four. Keep it yeah. up, good boy. You know what I mean? But what I will say is, in terms of United, that, listen, that first half, I won't even go into the second half. The first half, What's, what was more frightening for me is it felt like either players gave up or like nobody knew what to do. Like honestly, I, I can't believe I'm saying this because I actually feel, I actually rate the kid, but I don't remember seeing Kobe once, apart from when the camera switched to him to say that he was on the pitch, and and that was in the first half. I didn't I couldn't understand why so many players for United just seemed like they weren't even there, like non-existent. And I think one of the players that's actually disappointed me the most that you guys have signed recently is uh, your striker, Xerxes. He just, like, obviously, I'm not going to say, you know, you've got to finish all your chances, but the chances he has had this season, I would have expected him to bag at least one or two of those. He hasn't. Garnacho is Garnacho. Never rate the kid, as many people would know on the pod anyway. Rashford. I think he was a good dude. No, nah, I think, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like, it's time for Rashford, you know, to hang up the boots and become an MP because he's done wonders for the kids, you know, like, and I'd vote for him. I really would. I'm not, this is not even me being disrespectful. Look, serious face, serious face on. Like, I'd legit vote for him as an MP because this football thing is done. It's cooked. It's completely, it's completely gone. And the man that I want to highlight the most was when he was signed, a few United fans on Twitter were hyping I remember one man even on a podcast started singing, just give me the light. Mm. Well, it looks like the light Who's is turning. Who's that? Who the hell? <laughs> KG. <laughs> KG, the comedian, was singing, just give me the light. Just give me the light. Listen, brother, I've never seen a defender turn that slow in my life. And you, man. What's Harry Maguire? No, 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 no. Maguire, watched, Maguire's got. You've watched Harry Maguire. Nah, Maguire's got far more mobility than than. No than chance. The lit, no the lit chance. Is moving. No Horrible. chance. 
absolutely no, horrid. No, absolutely no, horrid. No, he, we're, we're talking about he, trash he and garbage here. Yeah, that's horrid. Absolutely horrid. But hey, I don't know where United go from here because that first half. Honestly, I feel like you're going to show us another one of those first halves again in your next game. I don't think anything's going to change. No, I think that the quality of the team is where the quality of the team is. I don't think they look like they knew what they were doing. The structure wasn't right. The individual confidence and execution of the players wasn't right. But then Spurs are also a team that are good enough or have enough players who can actually really take advantage of of those weaknesses in the team, the holes in midfield. So I think we're going to kind of have a similar season to last year. Bumble about, win some games 1-0, lose a few more games and end up mid-table-ish. So <clears throat> if you're talking about what you we can what? do, the manager has to go. Do you know what, though? You know, in comparison to last season, yeah, it's like all your underlying metrics were actually way worse than yes. where you eventually finished. So it's like... Even if you improve on that, you could like potentially even finish lower in the table without, you know, um <clears throat> some of the finishing luck, right? That that if if you call it luck kind of thing, because it's like if you remember the amount of games last season where you got batted and then McTom will just come out you know, with a late winner or, you know, an equaliser or Maguire might come with with something out, out of the blue or, you know, I think there was a hot finishing streak for Hoyland um, midway through the season to get you a lot of points, right? And it's like, if you just have a little bit of bad luck in front of goal whilst still having, you know, the same underlying performance, then you could be in a real bad position this season. I think... You know, actually, I think eighth was a false position for you, man, last year. How about we? How, how about we talking, Dan? <laughs> listen, yeah. No, nah, Dan, you want to say twelve? Listen, just, just say. It. I, no, 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 no. I don't. I don't <laughs> no, because I, because, because I think, yeah, um, I, I think West Ham don't look great. Um, so far this season, I'm I've not been overly impressed with Brighton. Um, so far this season, I've not been overly impressed with Newcastle either. Um, so I, I I don't see you guys competing for top four as it as it currently stands. I think Spurs have proven today that they are better than you as as far as I'm concerned. I think Chelsea um, have started the season really well. I think they're clearly better. They finished you know quite a few points ahead of you um, by the time the season ended last year. I think Villa are better. So you know I'm looking at this and I'd say I'd say that sort of seventh and below is is where I see you, man finishing without you know sacking this this ten hard guy you know because I think ultimately I know you know I listened to Ten Hag's um presser on on my way home just now and he was saying how uh the red card changed everything this that and the other and it's like I think I despise this guy um more than any other Man United manager that I've sort of seen since since oh, is it, is this a sheer volume of because, the because he just Acts like the thing is, you lot are an up, yeah. So I'm happy that he's there, but he just chats so much rubbish. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you watch that first half, Spurs were literally having their way with you, kind of thing, right? Like they were. It was a. It was a. It was a jolly up. You get hey, what I'm yo. saying? Hey, I'm not. I'm. I'm it's, it's not even an AO for me. Yeah, that's what I was watching. That's what I was witnessing. Yeah, like. I'm I'm looking at the midfield and it's like Kobe Mainu is a guy that I really like, but he doesn't actually deserve this setup that you man are, 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 are throwing him into. Yeah, the, the guys there left on an island trying to do three players running, Bruno Fernandez running around like a headless chicken, Ugarte, who is a guy who um, you know, I, I, I like the look of at sporting. You know, when he played against us, um, he was very good. But it's like I'm looking at this guy and he looks ridiculous in that midfield setup you know um especially today like it just looked like men men versus boys in there and you look at who spurs had in their sent in their midfield area there's no reason for you guys to be you know physically dominated by bentancourt madison and um kulazewski i think that's really really poor so you know i'm just looking at this unite like ten Hag. ultimately he has to get sacked he just has to um because otherwise i just don't see where this club goes 
Yeah, I can I completely agree. It's just a shit show from front to back. Players are lost. They're, I think it's something we touched on from from the minute he joined Cougs and just having if you're not impressive at as going forward, just be compact, be hard to score against, be a team that at least has some structure and you can keep your score lines respectful. We we have seen over his two and a bit years that that's just not the case. The batterings are, are, are frequent. So I don't think we've really learned anything new. The, the question is that how bad are any of us going to let this get before they, they make the decision to, to pull the trigger? There's no faith in him, really. It took them ages to confirm that they were going to keep him as manager. And while they were doing that, they spoke to everybody under the sun. Um, and it took the fans coming out and saying that they wanted him to, to stay and keep his job. Um, I hope you guys are happy. <laughs> so yeah, th this is this is what it is. I think there's nothing really um, more to be learned or gleaned from it, to be honest with you. Um, and yeah, I knew this run. So this is Spurs, Porto, Aston Villa, uh, and then we had Twenty and Crystal Palace away before that would probably be the undoing of him. We've played Palace and Twenty, two draws, uh, and we've lost handsomely at home today. Went Porto next, and then obviously Villa. Um, after that away. So, yeah, let's, let's see how it goes, man. <laughs> um, so that's Manchester United. Another bat It's normal. It's normal. Just another battering for Manchester United. Did this yeah. Thing, you know, at this point in time. Sorry? I think one of the, so this is the state of the club at this point in time. You know, I think one of the biggest issues is like, there's, there's just no identity at the club. You know, there's nobody that's like guiding the club in a certain direction. You look at the top clubs at the moment within Europe, I mean, within England, sorry, and obviously City, they're being guided by um, Ep and um, Chixi. You know, the, the club is all pulling in one direction. You know, Arsenal, you move over to them. Arteta, um, what's his name? Um, Edu. You know, they're all pulling in the, in the right direction. They all want to get to one place, you know, as a club together. And I think what happens with United is, you know, they've obviously, you know, gone for like the big name managers here and there. They try to sign players to fit into the managers. And when you try to just like, Fit a manager. You, you don't. You don't build a. You don't build a squad that's conducive to success. In my opinion, in my opinion, I think the best way is you need to build the squad and have a manager that's going to be able to guide you. Because if you fall into the manager's taste way too much, I just feel like it just makes a mishmash of players. And I think when you look up where we were and we, where we have been of recent years, in Chelsea in particular, we fell um, symptoms of that. And I think United have been like in that actual like just whirlwind of mess for like, the last few years. I think it's up to any of us now to really, you know, put a foot down, get their players that they want in, build their culture, you know, so it starts from home. You know, you need to obviously build a stadium, place a shithole, you know, fix the training grounds, get the players happy to be there. And that's a big thing, you know, like, even when, like, when I look at Chelsea, for instance, like, so one of the things that's popped out for us as fans is, like, just how happy the players are together. And I think those, like, little things, you know, just those small things, they build up and they, and they help a club you know, going forward. I don't think with United, as big as an institution as it is, I don't think they're anywhere near as where they should be culturally within the, within the, within the nation. Because like, for, for United, and the size of the club they are, they should have the best academy in, in, in the world, let alone England. They should be bringing through, they should be signing the best young talents coming through. So I think for United, it's just a thing now of like Ineos actually just, you know, just guiding the club and just taking them in one direction, having the manager just going to fall within that. Because I don't think Eric Sinclair is their guy. And I think that was their first failing in terms of like, actually giving an extension or sacking him. But that was their chance to really, you know, start from fresh and really have a like, clean slate. So I think that's like a, a big thing for United going forward. I think they just need to have a, have a clean slate, add sack him immediately now, get a manager that you trust in, go from there. Cool. Fair enough. Nice one, Bab. Let's go on to yesterday's late kickoff. Uh, top of the table. Uh, on slots, plucky reds. Dr. Mike, you good there? You got enough storage? You're you're still on mute. Thank you. I'm good. I'm good, brother. That, that, that mute button is beating his ass, man. Bro, <laughs> what it is, bro. There's a two second delay. When I unmute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what makes me say is when you start talking and I can't hear you, well, we can't hear you, and then there's obviously the mute button, so seconds delay or whatever, just unmute, then talk. Listen, um, bro, relax. You're going to get some, man. Let's, 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 trust let's... me. I'm sorry. 
week where everyone won, so I'm not going to get much, to be honest with you. Um, there's, there's, so, just, there's just one one tweet that's just killed me. Yeah. He goes, if Ugarte is worth 65 million, Wallahi, I'm worth 15 million. I refuse to believe there's a 65 million difference between him and me. There's no way. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that, that's that's a horror signing already. I think he had a cameo maybe against Palace or somebody. It was like 15 minutes. I was like, yeah. Money wasted, money down the drain already. And the problem, and the problem is, is the fact that if you have to get to the summer and you have to upgrade on a guy you just bought for sixty million, you're in problems. You're not going to sell it. You're either keeping him as cash lock in the squad, or you're selling him at a loss. <laughs> Do you know and what I've just remembered? All of summer to basically pay the same uh, price they were asking for at the start of summer, which we said we didn't want to pay. So, you know, I've just remembered, you know, I've just remembered, yeah, this is because, you know, Mariah, you said like, oh, you tuned into my, <laughs> tuned into my TL to see where my head's at, yeah? I just remembered your your tweet after the 20 game, yeah, right? Where it said, Ugate is his crap, yeah? <laughs> I said, that's the closest I'm going to get to Mariah head loss. <laughs> yeah, I even... <laughs> I like, hey, really was, was just quite simply like an observation of the facts as they presented them to themselves to me at that point. You know, I've got a way here to be, I've got a way, I've got to see a bigger sample size. I don't, man. I don't need to see any more. It's guy, horrible. This guy like, would just be hey. tweeting. This guy would just be tweeting, you know, philosophical <laughs> lines, yeah. I'm, All of this and, I'm not a philosophical man, everybody will tell you and that. Then, and then he never tweets about United. And I just see you know, God, his crap. I said, Yeah, <laughs> this guy's finished with him. He's yeah. done with him. <laughs> well, 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 I've, got, I've got a question for well, you. Well, 35 right. minutes fell <laughs> in the first half where he didn't know where he was, he didn't know what was happening. Or what he was doing. It was crazy. He could have been back in Uruguay and he wouldn't have had an he wouldn't have had a clue. Yeah, Babs, what's your question, mate? So how long do you think it would take to fix this mess of the mess right. that was all this which, so how long do you think it's gonna to take to fix this mess within the squad that how, how was obviously put together? So just in terms of like putting together a competent, you know, starting eleven and, and bench that you can trust. How do you quantify? So how do you quantify that by league position, point tally? League position, exactly. League position. League position. So what like position? Push it for top what, three. What, what, what position? Top three. Top three. Um, I don't know. Two, three years. Two, three years probably. That's but that's two, three years. With that, yeah. Do, do you think the more important thing is the players being brought in or the manager that's going to be brought in? I think they're quite they're equally important. Players are only as good as the manager's ability to get the most out of them. So there's a lack of quality in the squad, but there's also an issue that the manager isn't currently getting the best out of the players we have anyway. Um, but you also need the manager to be able to come through and once they get the initial squad, which isn't good enough, be able to manage that. I think where you kind of want to be at with your squad is know who's good enough to stay, who's good enough to go, who are players who can potentially improve and be value adds. And I think in the Manchester United environment at this moment in time, you've got guys who are having to start just because players are injured and you just don't have any other options. You've got guys who will probably look a lot better in a much more structured uh, system. So it's just a whole melting pot of crap, really. Um, mm. But if you're asking me right now, Ten Hag's got to go. It's time to go. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think there should be any United fans that disagree with you at this point. I just think the evidence is just... It's, it's just it's staring in the face, and I think it's you, know you, minute, get to that right? point, you know you know you get to that point where everybody's like, "Ah, oh, you know, we're going to be able to judge it from this run of games." If you come to that point, that's when you know the guys know. It. That's when you know the guys know it because that's actually saying these games are going to give you the tipping point for me to say, "Okay, get him out." But if you really back a manager of them and you really think the manager's work your time, I don't think you should be in this situation. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know, man. I think you guys are. I think you guys are in big trouble if you get if you let him Why do you think we're in big? Why do you think we're in big trouble? He just looked lost. Just, I don't really, I don't really get the, the substitutions he makes, the way he sets you guys up. I think there is some talent. Is big trouble with the assumption that he's going to be the manager the whole season? Is that what I'm saying? If he stays for the season, oh, you'll be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I generally think you'll be. You, I, I think you'll be in big trouble. Yeah, nah, I, I, I think. think the, in big trouble, I think the Ruben Nistelrooy addition to the coaching staff wasn't um, an accidental addition to the coaching staff. Uh, we're about to go on to talk about Liverpool. Yeah, that, that, that was Mike. nasty, man. He's, he's, he's disappeared. He's, he's cars on the way his mute button is. Supposedly doesn't have any space on his device to actually upload the, the vocals that he's given us, his dulcet tones. Um, so I'm going to come across to you guys and you guys can kind of start from an uh, uh, unbiased perspective. 
what you're seeing with Liverpool. Krugs, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with you because it is your tweets, your timeline that brought Dr. Mike onto the main pod. You don't know what it looks like a year or plus ago, uh, off the back of the Liverpool Spurs draw. Um, what did you what did you see yesterday in that uh late kickoff? You know what? I thought it was a it was a bit of a difficult game for Liverpool, to be honest. Um <clears throat> I think they, they kind of just, they looked okay. I think Wolves caused them, you know, s- s- minor issues, but it was a bit of a, you know, meh performance. I think there were a couple good good, good uh, uh, performers for Liverpool. I thought Konate was doing really well up until the Wolves goal, where I think he just had like a momentary lapse. Um, you know, what did Pep call Grabener? Um, obviously, he gets man in a match as well. So it looks like he's warming something um, for the season in that sixth position. Um, and, you know, the, the stats in that looking quite nice. But I think I, I put um, Graven Birch under surveillance last week. I'm still going to keep him under surveillance, to be honest, just because I think Liverpool's start to the season um, has, you know, it's, it's a weird one where it's like, I don't really know how quite to judge it yet. Um, obviously, the only sort of big game that they've played so far, United at Old Trafford, um, and we've seen what Spurs have just done to United today um, as well. So I, I still have to take it with a little bit of a, you know, a pinch of salt, right? Um, so I'll still be watching Liverpool. I think they've obviously, they started well with the results. Um, I think yesterday could have been a potential banana skin if not for you know, um, Samedo just immediately after their equaliser, just losing his head um, in that way. So, you know, I think if they had settled down for maybe five, ten more minutes, um, it could have been a little bit sticky. That's something that I would have liked to have seen how Liverpool um, reacted uh, to that. But, you know, unfortunately, we didn't get there. So, you know, I'll still be watching. I think they've got Palace in a league next, who also haven't started very well. So I expect Liverpool to get the three points there. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see with this team. I'm not, I, I, I'm still watching. I'm not going to be too down on them. I'm just saying it's difficult for me to to gauge where they fully are yet, given, you know, I think a lot of the fixtures should be one of the fixtures yeah, yeah. On, papers, on paper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they yeah. haven't really had that big chat challenge yet. We're going to come across to you, Dr. Mike. You look like, yeah. Yeah, I think who's making good points there. I think the manager, crucially for me, the manager making the same noises that you're making there, Cougs, where it's like, he's essentially said we've played six pretty poor teams so far, right? So what his challenge to the players has been, and he said it twice now, his challenge to the players is, when you're having to play Aston Villa and then you're playing Champions League games soon after that, let's see the level. Because so far, they've actually fallen, they've actually failed in one of the tests they've had so far. We lost them at the Forest. So, yeah, the jury's still out. No, I don't think anyone's getting carried away. What I would say is the way in which the manager wants to approach games, and we haven't really seen it in the past two or three weeks, but before the international break, the approach we were try- starting to see emerge from those games, if that's something that we can we can do more consistently, I think we can make marginal gains and, and bridge the gap between us and, and, the, and the two top teams. Whether we can win it or not is another question, but I certainly think that approach, the way we're trying to play games in that spell, is more conducive, is more conducive to success. And I think... The game yesterday, the game yesterday, it probably was our worst performance apart from the Forest game. I don't think we, I don't think we controlled the games as I would have wanted to. We didn't create that much as well. I think we found it tough. But in those tough away games, it's always just important to get the points on the board and move on. I actually think Wolves have been competitive in all of their games, apart from maybe Chelsea, where they just got blammed. Um, and they, they last year was really poor that day. But they've been competitive. So I knew it was going to be a testing game. But no one's getting carried away. I don't think that this is... Because we don't know enough about the manager, because it is a change, no one can get carried away. But I would say that the way in which he wants to approach games, I think is conducive. It's, it's the way teams should be playing if you want to have aspirations of winning the title. Whether we can do it consistently is another question. Hmm. I've just got a question, right? Because it's like, you know, you, you've compared the Forest game and the Wolves game a little bit there. But I didn't think that the the... The performances were that similar, if that makes sense, from the opposition. So I think Nottingham Forest, they were very much like, you know, deep block, let's see what you can do. I think they actually defend quite well week to week, uh, Nottingham Forest, whereas I think Wolves, it was more like their dribblers were causing you a bit of issue, um, especially, I think, in the first half where... We could have get out as well. Yeah, they, they, were sort of, they, they were sort of like driving with the ball, you know, sort of catching, <clears throat> catching you... Um, 
in 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 their press. So, like, do you think that these are sort of like teething issues with the you know the manager um, trying to input his style of play and the contrast with you know maybe the direct style? Yeah, I think the, the under, loop of- under Klopp. Yeah, I think the low block issue is definitely one that is a teething issue because I think we've spoken about it before. You, you myself, we both spoke about it actually. And I think it was a pod last year where you spoke about individual quality being important for low blocks. And I just think this not in Forest game was a game where literally seven players dropped a stinker at the same time. Like Salah had his worst game ever for the club, probably. So Bosley was, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't yeah, good. Yeah. There's free frame there, boom, so Bosley. Um, can we speak on him? It's been a year now. Obviously, he's a player who came in, did really well. I think it was actually roughly around the Spurs game when the wheels started to, to fall off, no, was... proverbially fall off. Um, had a little bit of an injury, come back. Hadn't really gotten back to the levels last season. How's he started this season? It's been a mixed bag. I, I, I think he actually, the first few games were, were okay. They were fine. There was nothing like, you weren't blown away by him. It was just like kind of composite performances. I think since the international break, he's been he's been quite poor. I think the Forest game was an absolute disgrace. I think Milan, he scores a goal in that game. But again, it's not a great performance. The ball's bouncing off him at times. Yesterday, again, it's the final pass. It's the final action. For me, the really weird thing about Sabozza is when we first signed him, the things that everyone told me about him was, you know, he's a sort of player that's going to get you a goal, get you an assist, but the other side of his game is a bit flimsy. He can't really tackle, doesn't really press that well. And at the start of last season, what we saw was a player that was actually like, yeah, eye-catching performances, kind of complete midfield performances, really good up and down, you know, good quality in the final third. Since since probably the Tottenham or the Luton game, which I think was around like mid-October, early October, since then, the attacking quality has been really underwhelming. The pressing side of his game is actually probably the only reason is that he's in the team because he actually presses really, really well. But if you're going to play number 10 for a team like Liverpool, who are what, a top three team in this country, the quality on the ball needs to be significantly better. You cannot be offering me what... So that, there'll be times when a ball's played into him, it's just bouncing off him, literally bouncing off him. He's got time to pick a pass. He's playing it behind guys. I'm thinking... And I, 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 I don't know how to assess him because... At the start of last season, he introduced me to a vibe he couldn't maintain, fell off a cliff, and now I'm just like, what are you, bro? Like, are, is it confident? Are you just crap? Mm. Like, I'm leaning towards he might just be crap, but <laughs> I, I don't know yet. I, I, I don't want to be, I'm not sort of, I don't want to be like polemic and dramatic. I just, I need to see yeah. a bit more, but yeah. I can't lie, it's, it's very scary. When you calling it, Dr. Michael, not to put you on blast or under the lights, as it were, when are you going to make a decision? <sighs> Brother, do you know have what it is? That week. It's, it's, it's the next few or, months, man. Or have you made a decision and we'll just have to wait till you actually probably come out? I think that's it. I think that's it. I think... You know what it is? There are some guys... We've all been there. We've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? You know when you're trying... You want him to do well. It's like your son. Like, I want him to do well, but it's just like... But he might not just have the faculties. So the only place really to hear your un, uncut, unfiltered opinions on Sabozla is in probably the cop end chat. That is where... Yeah, man. The, the brothers really know. Serious. The brothers know how the I feel. I, actually, I really want him to do well. That's the thing. I really want him to do well. I just... Yeah. The last few weeks... Just, it eroding my confidence in him, honestly. I'm yeah, let's, let's just be let's be honest and call a spade a spade. He ain't it. Let's just let's just call it. He ain't it. Like I know you're trying to be nice, but your son's garbage, bruv. Like just call it. You know. Listen, brother, man. We'll talk soon. <laughs> we'll talk soon. Um, are there any players in the team so far this season who really impressed you? Really stood out? I know you're kind of in the middle of a bit of a monologue when I asked the buzz like question. So yeah, just to get your your full thoughts. Yeah. I've been really impressed with Konate. I think Konate has been, been fantastic in terms of... I think Konate can be a bossa defender. You know, Sometimes he can be a bit too crash and bang and a bit too... But now he's back to basics. I, I like what he's doing now. It's just like, you know, meet and veg defending. Win your jewels, pass the ball, keep it simple. You know, don't do anything too rash. It's, it's so I've, I've been really impressed with him. I think, um, obviously, Gavin Birch has been mentioned before. I think the test for him will be because yesterday we also had a, Gra- a Graven Birch plan where, because he's often inv- involved in the first phase, they had um, Gomez press him 
And he actually managed to do quite well against him and and, and win that battle. But when teams realise that he's our he's kind of our first the player we look for in the, in the first phase, how's he going to manage being pressed, being being kind of targeted in that way? But so far, like all you can do is judge him based on how he's played, and and he's been really good, probably our best player this season. Um, and yeah, I think Diaz. I've not been like overwhelmed by his performance level. Like, I'm not, I'm not looking at him thinking, oh, this is a completely different player. He's scoring goals, which is nice, mm-hmm. and he's more clinical, which is nice. I've the actually been more impressed by Gakpo. The numbers aren't moving you. Uh, the numbers are fine. I mean, like it's for me, but I. It's all about a process for me. Like, what am I seeing with my, what are you doing in 90 minutes? Yeah. And I think Diaz is scoring goals, which mm-hmm. is fine, but I'm not seeing much in terms of performance level that's completely different to last season. Whereas Gapo, whenever he's played, he's almost his version unplayable at times. Like against West Ham in the second half, obviously it's just West Ham, but against West Ham, literally the last 45 minutes, the last the second half, just completely cooked them. Completely. How do you like what 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 were you when you say it's virtually unplayable? What you've seen is ball carrying, is this like what what Ball carrying the way he combines the plays around him, um, but mainly for him, it's the, it's a powerful running like against AC Milan. There were so many times they just couldn't get near him, like just so strong when he gets going, comes in off that left hand side. So I actually think he's got less numbers than Diaz this season. What's the difference between ball carrying and powerful running? Yeah, it's much of a muchness, much of a muchness. Okay, cool. I just want to, I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's the same. I don't think, maybe. What's I the difference? Is, I think that, that ability to like roll off defenders when they're trying to attack you. This ball carrying is just like a general, like for instance, like a Kovacic, he's a ball carrier, but then like a Ruben Loftus, I feel like he's a powerful runner. Yeah, but you can be both, I guess. I think you can be both, but I do think there's a difference. That's fair, that's fair. But yeah, so I think Gapper's performance levels have moved me more. I think we're in a good place with those two, where you have Diaz scoring goals, mm. doing fairly well, and you have Gapo kind of performing well whenever he's needed. So I think in general, we're in a good place, and it goes back to what I would, what I would, what I would say about the team where. This is a team that is going to be competitive. Like, and all you can do is be in it, right? All you can do is be in the race, be in the mix and see what happens. Obviously, we know City have we haven't got Rodri now, so we'll see how that affects them. But right. again, just stay the stay in touch and distance. Just stay local, people. right? If you're still like within six points yeah. of the top in January, then exactly. see where you are in March and then you go exactly. from there. I'd have right? Arsenal's the favourites. I do think Arsenal are the favourites now. And obviously we'll, we'll go on to them when, when Mr. Dan Boogs cooks up something, but they're the favourites. Yeah. It's in their hands for me, and let's don't, see what let's see what they don't, do. Don't run, Mac, man. Don't run. I'm, yeah. I'm not running, brother. I said we're in the mix. Oh, oh, in the mix. Oh, oh, you guys it's in, look, right? you know? it's in your house already. It's in, it's in there. Listen, it's in their backyard, man. Let's. That, that's a nice little segue. We we're gonna go to Chelsea, but that I, I can't ignore that segue from you, Mike. Uh, Dan, obviously, um, up, man. I like it. Uh, at home against uh, newly promoted Leicester, four two, probably flattered. You based on the performance on the actual day. Um, I mean, I said, us. Scored, I said you should have scored probably right. more, and it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay, okay, uh, okay. or flattered them, should I say? Sorry. Um, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, that, 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 that was ready to fly down to Port Eve right there, boy. <laughs> <laughs> fly, 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 to fly down. Um, the ring four. Um, but yeah, what were your thoughts? Not so much on Leicester because that's a game I expect you to win. But things have happened in the last week or so. Main rivals have lost a key player. Where's your head? Like, how you how you feeling? Because I know you're not a man who who shies away from from putting your, your sticking your neck out. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, um, my my little tussle with with Doctor Mike, um, it, it would have been half hearted because I I fully hear where he's coming from in terms of you know making us favourites. I think you know especially after watching City for the past sort of 24 months, what rodri has been doing in that team. I think he's probably their best and most key player for them to to play well. You know, I think if you look at it, I don't think he's lost a, a game playing for Man City uh, for cl- coming up close to two years, you know. So um, I think him being out, I think it's quite different to, you know, when KDB was injured, when Haaland was injured um, in previous seasons because they quite literally don't have anyone who can, I think feel that burden. I know Pep was talking in the week about um oh uh you know maybe as a team they can replace some of his um attributes, but I'm not sure they can with the current um with the current squad. Um and then coming over to Arsenal, um, yeah, like you said, I think Leicester it, it has to be a win, you know. I think We've already dropped uh, two points against Brighton, which I thought was quite frustrating at home um, early in the season. 
uh, and I felt that we couldn't do so again in at this stage, game game week six, uh, and drawing or potentially losing um, uh, two of your first three home games. I don't think would be um, conducive for you know what the long term aspirations are come May, right? So um, I was very interested to see how we would perform um, in this game because. You know, no Odegaard. I think this was the first time that we would really be expected to go into a game and you know really dominate uh, play against a low block. And Odegaard and that right hand side with Saka, Ben White, etc., is you know our main lock picker. I think when it comes um, to these low blocks, so I was really interested to see how we would fare. Um, and I thought we did really well, man. That first half, uh, especially, was. Um, pretty exceptional. Um, I thought Calafiori um, and Timber, they've really sort of um, added an extra layer of unpredictability in our build-up because, you know, both of them like to travel with the ball. They like to dribble. They like to, you know, um, take someone out of out of play before they, you know, make their next action, which um, I don't think uh, we've really had much in the team. Like Calafiori, he looks like a real real talented player you know i thought he was you know very very good and um you know sack on that right hand side you know there's this been this whole thing that odegaard is holding him back and stuff like that on arsenal twitter i don't know you know what what these men um are really trying to cook up with that uh that agenda but Saka was excellent um yesterday i think from the first time he got the ball 1v1 1v2 christensen and mavadidi neither of them could really live with him, you know, like Mavadidi, I could see him, you know, I was at the Emirates, I could see him getting visibly frustrated with having to, you know, track back and try and help Christensen um, yeah. out and defend. And Saka was just giving him the absolute business and he was getting pissed off, um, pissed off having to, you know, do that much defending. Um, yeah. And 2v1, they couldn't live with him. And, you know, I think he's really unfortunate not to leave with uh, a goal or an assist in the game yesterday because he was, you know, really, really warming. So, Overall, I was I was pretty impressed um, with our performance, and I think you know the Leicester uh, equaliser was unbelievable. Like the James Justin, he, he has to you know take a bow um, a for strike. that for that strike, you know, and, I, oh, and I, like yeah, I was in I was in the ground, and I was literally just I was shaking my head that it was you know 80, 83, 84, 85, 86, mm. and I was like, how is this game two two? Like I, from what I've watched. Like two two would have been such a robbery um, mm. in terms of you know how dominant we were, uh, and so I'm just glad that in the end we managed to to get the three points, you know. And I think the scoreline, us scoring four goals, reflected the performance. To be honest, um, I've I've seen some you know xG models coming out with a variance that it could have been up to six xG on the day, you know, and that's what it felt like that we we really blamed them. Um, to be honest, so yeah. Putin boy. Mm. That's what that's what no, the people want. Yeah, that's what the people want. What you say? Goal, I tuned in to, to hate watch the last twenty minutes, and and I was disappointed. The, the goal was coming, and it just when I knew one of us. That, that was your first goals. mistake, Mike. Man, you don't tune into for the last twenty minutes. No, yeah, Babs. Yeah. Let me tell you something with me. Yeah, there's, there's, too much error there. there. there's too much. Let me tell you something there. with me. I will hate watch every week until I get something. I don't. I'll be there next yeah. week. <laughs> and the week after. And the week after. I don't, bro. I will get. I will get it. Yeah. I will oh, hate watch the game 38 if I have to. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Well, one way or another, I'm going to leave with something. At, at some point, I will be rewarded with my God in heaven. Yeah. At some point, it will happen. So, you have to I be there. That, be there. <laughs> I, I respect the hell out of, of, of that mentality, Mike. I think with most of the traditional like top four, top six sides, when they're at home against a team that they're like on paper at least, better than... Eight times out of ten, they're gonna find a winner. They just like this is football, and it's kind of my lived experience all these all these years. So I didn't even bother. Like I, I saw the goal, I was like, oh, wonder strike. So it wasn't like oh, they popped them or anything, or like it's a wonder strike. You check the stats, Arsenal dominating, and it's kind of like yeah, beat BAU. So Havertz grabs one, and these corners, man, these corners. <laughs> hey, <laughs> bro, do you know what? Yeah, it's crazy because um, I've just seen now that. Uh, Man City, they've had, um, I think 16 more corners than us. Spurs have had uh, 14 more corners than us, or something like yeah. that. And it's just like, you know, so people can't even use the whole, you know, uh, 
these men are, you know, like Saka, this left foot of his is nuts on the, on the set piece. You mm. know, like I'm looking at this and I'm just thinking that like, we watched the whole Euros. He didn't take one corner. They left it to Foden and we saw how poor England were um, from, from set pieces. So I think that's, um, you know, another sort of black mark against Gareth Southgate. But well, what, even, what? Though, even though they've sat, even though it's gone, you just... Yeah, I think, yeah, I, think it's, I think it's proper poor, man. I think it's proper poor. dead body, I hear it. Yeah. I think it's proper poor because if you look at it, like, Rice's set pieces as well have been um, yes. really good. So it's like I'm looking at this. They both play for England. You've seen mm -hmm. the success. Neither of them are on on the set pieces. To be fair, for the Rice one, you got Trent there, so I'm not going to be too mad at it. Um, yeah. When when he was at least playing, but you know, once Trent was out of the team, come on, man, you you, you the, the formula is there for you. Do you know what I'm saying? But um, on the corner thing, I definitely think you know um, these marginal gains. So you know when people are criticising the Arsenal set-piece team, this, that and the other. I'm like, look, you. I think Sean said it on one of our patron pieces. Molly May, word to Molly May, we all have the same 24 hours. Do you get what I'm saying, yeah? We all had the same 24 hours. You could, you can do this too, you know, if you just put in the work. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Is it a, are you dissing everyone or is this a motivational, you can do I'm, it too? I'm dissing <laughs> everyone now. I'm dissing everyone because it's like, there's well, nothing stopping you, 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 you teams. You get a quick two for one right there. Bro, like, <laughs> well, because I'm, I'm, I'm literally saying this, yeah. Because actually, like, if you look over the years, the the team that has statistically been the best team at set pieces has been Man City and and Liverpool. They've been the best two teams at set pieces. I think recently Everton have come into it, right? So it's like when Liverpool won the league, I think they scored something like twenty two or twenty twenty goals from set pieces in that season. It's like I remember thinking so many times that, you know, Liverpool chasing a goal, Mane will just come up with something at the back post or Van Dijk will come up with something on the back, on the back post. And I'm just like, you need every single marginal game you can mm. um, when you're, you know, competing for a title against this Pep Guardiola team. So I'm really happy that they've worked on it and look like they've got, um, you know, another string to the bow because ultimately when we're playing most of these teams um, and we're dominating, we're going to have, lots of corners so you know you scoring one percent of your corners it's not going to be enough you know what i'm saying you need to get more efficient at it because ultimately if you look at that i think saka took you know 10 corners or something like that yesterday maybe 11 um, and i think Declan Rice took six and from that that 10 or 11 corners he's created four big chances you get what i'm saying so it's like i'm looking at that and i say look that's four like 40 percent of our corners there are turning into a big chance like that is unbelievable. So you know, I think I think that deserves praise more than criticism personally. So yeah, Dan, I think the big thing as well is you see teams panic now when you have when you have a corner. So now what's happening is teams are scared to give away the corner, and when you get the corner, teams are like jostling and like guys are like, "Where's Gabriel? Where's Gabriel?" Like tussling. so, like yeah, it's definitely becoming a thing now. So it's it's a good thing. And like you said, when we were at our best and when City been at their best. You can think of the corner goals they've scored. Like Van Dijk scored so many important ones for us. Mane, Canate at times as well popped up with a few. So I think Allison even scored from a corner. Bro, yeah. exactly. Like, so it's, it's a good hey, weapon to have. That one there was one of. I think that may be one of the most unsuccessful hit watches in history. That may just be one. Of the, bro, was it? it was a West Brom away? West I Brom. Everybody yeah. was shooting that game, and of all people to bro. score, Allison. Bro, oh. I watched that with Mush in my house, yeah? This guy did the oh, knee slide man. with a Turkish mixed grill plate in his hand. <laughs> not one grain. <laughs> not, not one grain spilled on the floor, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. That's insane. That's, that's, that's insane. Right there, man. That's insane, man. Yeah, no. Fair, fair play to Arsenal. Um, things are coming in place, and sometimes say what you want, it may take an injury from the opposition or whatever the case may be, but you have to be in the position to be able to pounce when that opportunity becomes available. And I think you guys have kind of positioned yourself as the strongest challenges. Uh, Bab, just come across to you guys, last but for sure not least. Um, the Maresca era, cooking something up. Uh, your, your boy, Cole Jermaine Palmer, helped himself to four goals yesterday. Talk to us about the performance. How oh, greedy. How bloody greedy. Four goals, a wonderful performance. You know, he's really restoring the feeling at Stanford Bridge. Um, Enzo Moresco during the week and, and before throughout the season, he's been really cool for the fans to get behind the players. You know? One of the things that's been noted over the last few seasons by both players and um, the manager, even even going past the last few seasons, is that 
Stafford Bridge, when it's not going well, the fans are doing an amazing job of getting behind the team. I think that's been like a really big issue in terms of like, even when things aren't looking amazing, when there's a nil-nil, you know, the team are building up to the back, you know, the fans are jeering, they're whistling, you know, they're asking, they're calling for the team to, you know, move the ball faster. So, Moresco, he's really trying to get the fans on sand. I think that's a, that's, that's a great thing to do because, I think the top managers, they act as stewards, you know, they're, they're able to guide the club forward, they're able to galvanise the fans, galvanise the players and help everybody move in one direction. And I think with Moresca, I think that's what we're actually going to be able to find. You know, someone that's going to be able to guide us together, you know, push the team forward and really try and get some, get some results here. Yesterday, um, looking, at the, looking at the team performance, I was, I was really impressed, um, especially with the attack. I thought there was a ruthlessness that I haven't seen for a while at Chelsea. You know, I remember last season, the season before last, a big criticism of Chelsea and our attack has been the fact that when we were on counter attacks, we would mess it up. You know, it'll be a, it'll be a player make, making the wrong last pass. You know, it'll be a, it'll be a player you know not t- not connecting the ball correctly. And look, yesterday we could have had six or so go- goals. You know, you know, obviously Cole Palmer hit the post, had an offside chance. You know, Nicholas Jackson had a couple chances as well throughout the game. And yeah, I'm just really impressed with Palmer's all in all. Um, there's still a couple of worries for me. In terms of how defensively open we could be at times, but I think a lot of that is going to be just due to actually getting games under the belt for a lot of these players. Because um, I think when I look at Chelsea, right, I think we've got a really high ceiling, but I also think we've got a really low floor. And I think the only way for our floor to be raised is by the players being able to play consistently with each other. And I think what Moresca has done really well is actually you know, making sure that the lineups that are playing are extremely consistent. You know, it's the same lineup that played against West Ham, the, um, the same similar lineups that we played against Bournemouth. I think that's something that's been really good. I know even amongst the touchline of network, one of the things that was mentioned, you know, last season, season, the season before in particular, was the chopping and changing. You know, whereas Maresca, I think he's done a great job in terms of actually making sure that he has a consistent lineup, he has a consistent attack, he's going to entrust to actually get results. And even if a player doesn't have an amazing game, he's not going to just immediately take them, take them out. So, for instance, Noni yesterday, um, some people have said there was an argument that he should have been benched for Neto, but you know, Maresca, still let him play the game. You know. Took him off around the 60th minute. I think that's one thing I've been really, really impressive. Um, in terms of the midfield, I thought they did a good job in terms of controlling the game at times, but I think the, the game method and one of the things we spoke about in Chelsea was the fact that Brighton are there to be get on the tape in the counter attack. Um, I thought throughout the season, especially against United, even, I don't think United were amazing, but there were times whereby Rashford would make a run or the pass just would just wouldn't be you know, on point. Whereas with us, I trust our players to be able to make the pass. You know, and there were a few passes that Enzo was able to make it behind the lines. There were a few passes that Palmer was able to make. You know, like that even in the second half, you know, from, from deep in the first time um, over the top into Jackson, he takes over the striker. And I think what I'm seeing there is just like this real, you know, decisiveness from the attack. And it's something I haven't seen in a while. But yeah, I've, I've been I've been quite impressed so far early on. I think um I think I think the consistency of lineup then really helps with the, some of the decision making as well Definitely. because I think. Because I think the more that players play together, you know, they know what kind of run this person's going to make. So, like, some of the passes that you saw Jackson, um, Palmer playing to Jackson is because, you know, boom, I'm going to put it into this area and I know he's going to be able to to get get on that. Whereas, you know, if Jackson's now playing left wing and then you've got Nkunku there, Nkunku might want it to feet. And then, mm. you know, if Palmer's now playing on the right-hand side, um, instead, and then it's you know different angles, this that, and the other. So I definitely think you know that consistency of lineup is helping you lot. Um, is helping you lot, and I think the players who are playing now um, in Sancho, and then you've got Neto, Felix, and Kunku, um, and then Madweki. I think they are um, of a better standard potentially than what who was playing most of the games last season, right? So when you're seeing the likes of Madrid, I think Sterling was, you know, in a bad place with his confidence. So it was really kind of forcing things in a final third that these guys are a bit more, you know, relaxed and confident in their own ability. So they're making more of the right decision under um, under pressure. Yeah. And I think what you said about Brighton being open for the counter, I definitely agree with that. And this um, hurts a lot, guy. Uh, like I think the setup yesterday, it just... He actually just didn't respect Chelsea's midfielders and forwards at all. Um, I think when you're playing Dunk, Webster um, in the in in your back three, and neither of them are the quickest, and you were looking at a forward line of Jackson, who has burnt literally every centre back in this league, Madweki, who is just bet fast as well, and then you've got you know passes like um, Palmer. Enzo in there, and I think Caicedo is a very good passer as well, that 
playing that high high line is literally suicide um, in that match. It reminded me of when you lot played um, and uh, with oh, his yeah. nine men. Because ultimately, I know Palmer, he scored, what, four <clears> goals <throat> in a like in a 20-minute spell, right, from uh, – or maybe a 30-minute spell. And it's like – when It, went well, it was 20 one, minutes, bro. It was 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yeah. And it was like – when he went 1-1, I was watching a match of the day, and then I'm literally like looking up thinking, oh, this must be Palmer's second goal. Oh, this must be Palmer's second goal. Oh, this must be Palmer's second goal. And it was, it was literally like they're getting caught. I think it was two disallowed goals – Palmer hit the post. That high line um, from Brighton. And Wade hit the post as well. <laughs> hey! That that high line line everybody eats, bro. Everybody eats, man. Bro, and that was and that was before it went to 2-1. You get what I'm saying, yeah? So I'm looking at this and saying, like, yo, where is the adjustment? Because, you know, in the match of the day, when it comes up with the, you know, because they don't have the time, it comes up with the minutes. I'm saying three minutes later. I'm saying two minutes later. I'm saying <laughs> one minute later. And I'm just like, yo, like, what is going on here? Because, so basically, I think, yeah, Babs, we were speaking in the group chat. I think you were right that, you know, Chelsea did really well to exploit the high line, but it's honestly like an insane setup. And I think, you know, if Brighton are going to continue doing this, um, this ain't the Bundesliga too. Do you get what I'm saying? Like the teams, teams are going to punish you. And I think when you've got the players of the quality of Palmer and that, like they're going to put you to the sword viciously. What, Babs, where do you think Chelsea should be this season based on what you've seen so far? I, I personally think they're being underrated by a lot of fans because there was a Carragher thing at the start of the season or oh, they're not a promising young team and all that sort of thing. I actually think when I look at them now, they look quite stable in terms of starting 11s aren't changing too much week to week. You're starting to see relationships form. Even like someone like Sancho, I, I think it's a football of a three dependent on relationships. You've even seen him combine with Palmer a bit now and, and, and link up there. He's got an assist for him this week. He's sort of running behind. You've seen Jackson. I actually quite like what he's been doing so far. Um, perform really, really well. So yeah, what are your hopes in terms of what Chelsea can achieve this season? I think we've got to be pushing for third. I want, I want to knock someone off their perch. I really think we've, we've got the quality score to do that. And my, my, only, <laughs> my worry comes to the season, and one of the debates we're having within the Chelsea chat is around the striker area. So obviously, you know, Jackson's a good footballer. You know, he's got a, a good technical base and his ability there. But for me, I think the best strikers are the differential, the differential makers. You know, the guys that kill you. You know, give them a half chance. They're going to be able to just you know get a goal out of nowhere. With someone like Jackson, he doesn't fill me with that kind of confidence. And I feel like in, in games, mm. right, whereby you're playing extremely well. So, the, so for instance, right, um, you look at the Arsenal, let's say, I didn't watch that game, but we played extremely well from the sounds of it, right? I feel like if we were in those kind of games and we were relying on a striker to finish a chance, I don't trust Jackson to be like the differential maker. So I think that may be where I think we may, we may fall by would the way. Thank you. Or what would you do? You know what? Uh, at the beginning of the season, I, I was thinking just because I was hating on Jackson. I, I was starting to. But well, the thing with Nkunku is, right? He's not a striker and the fact that he's back to the whole game is just not there. And um, midweek, um, we, had a, we had a game in the cup against Barrow and you could see, even though he scored a hat-trick, you know, and he made some really lovely runs from behind, there's just moments whereby if the centre-back is to pin you, he can't roll you. He, he could have the ability to roll the centre-back. He's not really going to be able to hold up a centre-back. So I think that's where Jackson, you know, he wins that battle. So I would still probably play Jackson there, but I think in terms of taking us that next level, I think it's that getting that striker and, incre and increasing the flow of the squad by the, t the team just getting consistent minutes together because I think it's a really talented squad. And I, I, think, I, I really, really, I really do believe that. And also goalkeeper, I think that's also my... my yeah, Sanchez so, for the Sanchez, first two Brighton, Brighton goals. Bro, like, he is... He's, 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 he's genuinely he's, insane. I, I've never seen it. It's so weird, right? Because with him, I look at um, his skills and I think there's talent there. You know? I think he's got good distribution. He can make the odd save, but then... Boy, I know I have talent. Have talent. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like, even, even like when you see him between goals, he's like he's looking at him like I know I'm good, but I don't know what's going on because he's coming out for, to, to try and clear a, a, a header on the, around the edge of the box. Even yeah. last season against uh, against Arsenal, we're cruising the game, passing to mm. the rice. There's, there's, there's just too many moments, and I think with a goalkeeper, you need someone that's going to instill um, confidence in the defense. Because um, right. if you look a couple of years back, we had Kepa. You know, our centre backs were quite jittery. You know, they were a bit. They were always like on, 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 on their tippy toes. But remember that game against Liverpool um, during Project Restart? With, I don't know if you remember when the, when the ball comes in, they all shout Kepa. That's the kind of vibes I get with Sanchez. That these guys, I don't, I don't they trust him in particular. It's a horrible feeling. Obviously, I had it in the it's last. A tough feeling, man. Yeah. With David De Gea, 
Like the, the, the centre backs don't even really particularly want to pass him the ball. They just don't want the they're they're trying to keep the ball as far away from the keeper as possible at all times. Yes. And it just means that sometimes they make they make bad decisions. Like rather than mm. going back to your keeper, you're like, you know, I'm gonna try and dribble out of this tight area rather yeah. than pass it to him. But I don't want to because you, because, because because of a weakness in your squad, you automatically yeah. ruin one decision making. Oh, yeah. one decision yeah. option. So that's my worry. There's in terms of the goalkeeper and the striker in particular. Um, with Jack, Damn I think he's, 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 he could get there, but for me, I just don't remember traditionally through history a player that just developed ball striking. When you look at Jackson and, and, and his, <laughs> his game, there's just so many chances whereby the ball comes to him. He's, he's, he's like, you, you know, you know those, those footballs that kids play with, like the, like the ones that just like loft in the air, like it's just bare floaters. Yeah. Like when Floating. Jackson gets the ball, and he, he, you just see when he shoots, it's just, it's just hella floaters. You know, there's, there's he's no... still putting up good numbers, though. He's, he's still, still putting, putting up good numbers, and he's still putting up good numbers. I'm not, not, not going to take it away from him. He, he might be in the Sterling camp, you know, because I think Sterling's had that same issue where he's never been an amazing ball striker, but he still managed to score goals, probably from like positioning, movement. Mm. And I think Jackson maybe could be in that mold. Yeah, like my question is, you know where I think it'd be? Do you know what I'm sorry, I was just going to say, do you know what I think it'd be more of an issue? I think right now, um, the way sort of, and this is not really a and against Chelsea thing because I think this is what happens in the league generally. Yeah, I think teams are probably looking at your weaknesses a lot more than your strengths at the moment. So like mm. they're probably like Babs, you said, are oh, you're a bit nervous about how you look at the back, right? So teams are probably thinking, look, we can go and really attack them um, and really trying to lean on winning the game versus trying to stop your attackers. And I think we saw it a little bit with Spurs last <laughs> season how. You know, they say, ah, oh, Spurs have got a vulnerability at the back. Let's go attack them. But then last season, you see Spurs had the quality to put them to the sword um, on, on the counter and on the break. And I think where and if teams, you know, sort of try and show you guys a bit more respect, really come up with some game plans to, you know, reduce the spaces in and around the box, etc. Then some having someone like a Jackson who has inconsistent ball striking, can be somewhat of a problem where you know he's just got a minute or I'm sorry he's just got a second to take the snapshot in a box you know mm. it makes it much easier for the keeper to to do something mm. whereas at the moment you know he's getting four or five chances a game running in behind you know whereas if that you know the space gets congested he's not going to have that um that that amount of chances and you know like you said that ball striking can um become a big issue so I think you look at if you look at someone like Gabriel Jesus, just as a comparator, like I think that started the 22 23 season, he was having a jolly up. Do you get what I'm saying? And then once teams started, you know, defending us in a deep block, it got long for him. You know, oh, he's, he's having to go back to the center circle to, to try to get his game off, you know. So, that's um, wow, <laughs> just to touch the ball, wow. like a hooping at the center circle. <laughs> so, wow. let, me get, wow. let me get a touch. So, <laughs> wow! <laughs> no, thank you, possibly. Oh, Listen, so, yeah. So, so it's it's just something, just something. I, I, I'm just happy. No, no, something, something, like, something, like, something. Like, something like question for the two gentlemen: the, the Arsenal, the Arsenal and Chelsea chat. I've seen a few debates on the, on the timeline. I'd be interested to hear these two intellectuals give me their thoughts on a uh, Cole Palmer or Bukayo Saka. Over to you, gents. <laughs> Oh, that's not. What's that? Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what, Mike? Do you know what, Mike? Do you know what, Mike? Over you know to what? you, Babs. Gents. Babs, because Babs, Babs, I know your answer already, innit? Yeah, we had this chat last season, yeah. So, listen, Babs is going to say Palmer. I'm going to say Saka. But I'm going to say, Babs, let's not be distracted from the real enemy, yeah? And that is Philip Walter Foden, yeah? Let's talk Wait. on him. You know you're because... talking to me here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's, you're starting to my language. Let's so let's, let's talk right on him because ultimately, for me, you know, I think Palmer is a is a cold player, right? I personally think he's better in the ten position than he's right wing. I think, you know, if you're going to say better overall player than Bukayo Saka, I can see why you'll say that. I'm not going to be angry at, at someone saying that. I'll disagree, you know, and I'll agree to disagree. Um, I think Saka's a better right winger than Cole Palmer. I think Cole Palmer's a better number ten than than Bukayo Saka. Right, but I think both of those players are better in those positions than Phil Foden. Like I look at this and I say, can Phil Foden run a game the same way Cole Palmer can? No. Can he, you know, dictate a game from right wing the same way Bukayo Saka can that he did yesterday? No. But this guy is winning 
player of the season, you know, uh, English football's best talent, this, that, and the other. Yeah. And I'm not going to have it. I'm not going to stand for it anymore. Well, I was going to ask guy... you a question, Keith. I mean, I respect, I mean, 20 odd, 20 odd goals last season, champions. We're not going to speak on that. Is it fair to say you're probably dodging, avoiding, ducking the, the, the beast no. in front of you in, in this? In the I, I gave you my now. answer. I gave you my yeah. answer. I think I think Saka's a bit of a cop out. Do you think it's a bit of a cop out? Saka's yeah. a bit of a rat with a cold palm as a bit of a cop out. I want to know why. Why do you think? Why do I think that? Yeah, let's talk about Saka. Saka, Saka, I think I think Saka's thing is is different. He's he's had Jordan rules for the past three seasons. I'm sorry, like, and and this is this was my this was my debate, right? And the reason why I said. And the reason why I said um, I don't think he's a better right winger than Bukayo Saka is I've not seen Cole Palmer come into the same scenarios and come out on top. Earlier this season, earlier this season, I'm seeing tweets. Oh, they were double teaming him. Oh, they were fouling him. Do, 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 do. He's not able to get his... I've seen that scenario for Saka. Saka is almost made that his own. You looked at it yesterday, right? These men tried to kick him, kick him off the pitch. They tried to double mark him out of the game and he still came out on top, you know? Yeah. Eight, eight completed dribbles, eight passes. I, I will not see Cole Palmer doubled up, tripled up sometimes in the same way, get his game off the way Saka can. It's just not possible. Hey, it's just not. Talk, bro. Talk your over, talk. over to you, Babs. Babs, you want to make a counterpoint there? Well, hey, see, right. Well done, well done with the instigating. Very chilly. Because I think, I think Saka right wing, you know, I think he's definitely the better player. I think he comes from his dynamism. So he's able to beat his player a bit more. I think Palm was actually quite underrated there. I think he actually has a bit of a burst to get past players. You know, I think he was able to show that last season. But I think essentially, I think that's where he really, you know, comes to life. I think he's able to drop in, you know, get involved in the build up, you know, um, play off the both flanks, interplay with both the with both of the wide men. But in terms of the overall player, I don't think it's, I think I think Palmer's a better player. I think he's a better finisher. I think he's a better passer. You know, I think he's more creative. He's more incisive. I, I just think he's just a better player. I think in terms of dynamic, that dynamism, I think Saka has it, but for me, I think Cole Palmer's a better player. Are you trying to just paint Saka as an athlete there? Do you think? Hey, no, I'm not at all. I think Saka's a good finish. He, he, he you can kind of give him I don't, I don't think, the, 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 the thing, ball thing ball is, right, ball. I think Saka's, ball. Saka's ball. a good ball. footballer. Ball. Saka's more dynamic. Coogs knows. Coogs knows I rate Saka. You know? I'm, not, I'm not here to, to shit on Saka and say he's this or he's that. I think he's what? a quality player. But you rate Palmer more. I, think, I just rate Palmer more, man. Yeah, and, 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 and it's and, and it's and it's interesting because I remember even last season, but you, you know when you're you're seeing a player perform and in your head you're saying to yourself, maybe he's not that good, you know. Because I remember yeah. me and me and um, Sam Francis were having a debate around, you know, Palmer was you like, sounds like that. Me and Sam, Sam, Sam the Hokage, you know, because obviously what happened say, to freemium? What have happened to freemium? That guy. Hey, I don't know, man. I, he, 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 I, maybe he can come back to the pod, but you know, it's been, been a bit more, a bit of a while. <laughs> Oh, what's up? What's up? As I was saying, as I was saying, you know, so me and Sam were having a discussion, you know, about Palmer and Madison. Oh. You know, obviously, Palmer's having a great start. So I was like, I need to see more, I need to see more. But I feel like I, it's just when, when you see just certain Sam, players. Sam, like, Sam, 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 Sam dropped his mount stocks. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> boy. <laughs> them them stocks don't exist anymore. <laughs> he, was, he was telling us he's England's best ten and all of this, all of this nonsense, wow. man. So. I, I can't, I can't attest to him saying that. You know, I let him, I let him come to defend himself. The definition. How, how did you? I, I let him come and defend be... himself, but <clears throat> we're having a couple of discussions about. You know, I want to see Palmer doing more, but I just think what I've seen him do in the do last know, year. Do you know? Do you know what? With 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 Palmer, yeah, I think he's he's clearly just like un- unbelievable, and I think you know where I would agree with you is uh, with backs is that he does just like a lot more like off the cuff stuff right where it's like mm. you know he just pulls out something amazing I think there was a goal I think the most impressed I've been with him I think there was a goal where he was kind of running through on goal and he just decided right I'm gonna sort of like ball roll it past the keeper it was Luton. like a mad Luton. yeah it was just, yeah, that was it was just crazy yeah it was just wavy yeah. right so it's like I think you know when a player is capable of just you know really thinking outside the box like that like it's a re- it's like a level of you know like genius if i want to say it that ingenuity, way yeah. right and and ingenuity right so i really like that about his game and i think the issue that i have with you know saka and how he's viewed is that i think saka does that as well but he does it in a way where it's like it just he makes it look so easy right mm. that it's you know, lyric type of version Wait, so yeah, are, you, are, you know are you saying, saying so are you saying palmer doesn't make it look easy 
no, no, I think I think the way, do you know what? He makes it look effortless. Do you get what I'm saying? Right? Whereas I think I think that's a different thing to making it look easy, if that makes sense, right? I think that when Palmer I, I when Palmer it, man. You, Okay, so <laughs> this is really <laughs> messy, powerful no, 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 no. No, no, no. So do you, do you see when I say he makes someone makes something look effortless, right? Is that he makes himself it makes it look easy for himself, but I know another player can't do that, right? Yeah. Whereas I think when Saka does stuff, he makes it look as if what he's doing is a normal thing for a player to be doing, if that makes sense. Is it basically right? that Palmer's like, more flamboyant than Saka? Is that your point? I don't, I, don't, I don't really think it's the flamboyancy, right? Because I think the thing that Palmer's doing is like, it's a mad thing. Do you get know what I'm saying? It's like something that another player wouldn't think of. Whereas I think Saka does something that another player would think of, but wouldn't be able to execute, right? And I think with Saka, he does it, he does that thing so often that it almost gets underrated for me. That when you oh, double team him and he does a very simple thing like, oh, I'm going shift on my one, one, I'm going shift, shift, left, right, you know, and he gets it off, right? And and you can't defend him doing that, but people are like, oh, he's basic, he, he doesn't do the step over. That's a boring compilation. But I'm like, what he's doing is actually very difficult to do and you know, complete that action so often and so regularly, etc. So I think that's where he loses points for people. But for me, two top top players. Good tussle. Good tussle. Well, what about you, Mike? What about you, Mike? You ask the question. You, 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 you know yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, Mike. Give us, give us your take. So what's that? Yeah. Totally honest. Look, these are two world class players. I'd go that far with both of them. I have a preference for Palmer because I personally think a player that can produce that level of ingenuity. As consistently as he does, I just think that is just that is what it looks like to me. That's when you when I was a kid watching football, you're watching it for players like Palmer, that kind of ingenuity, that that ability to when you're just like, wow, but like how have you just done it? it for players like Saka? Mm. No, nah, Saka's a, I think Saka's a world class player. Like Saka's Saka's one of the best players in his position. I but I don't get that same feeling of like I'm not mesmerized by him. I'm just like, I think Saka's amazing. But I'm talking about how Palm makes me feel when I watch the game. I'm just like, when he's on it and like purring, like there's a game against Everton where he nutmegs him and Jackson one, two, nutmeg. And he fin oh. Just some of the things he does, just I'm just like, what are you doing, bro? Like, what are we watching right here? Like, you know, when someone's so good, they make you laugh. Yeah, you're, you're no, laughing. I've been yeah. trying to, I've been trying to fight this Palmer thing, and it's just you know, you just have to hold your hands up. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> ah! I have a Palmer, but I wouldn't be mad if if Dan thinks Saka's better. I wouldn't be like, oh, that's insane. How can you say that? Yeah, they're two top. You respect, players. you respect, you respect both players as well. World class players. Your, your preference in terms of what you like to see. Just leans more to a to a Palmer than a Saka. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's decent. That's fair enough. It's we're, we're in a good place um, in terms of talents in the Premier League at the minute. So we get to watch them week in week out do special things, man. Well, yeah. Just to jump in question, there, real quick. Because I was going to ask Bags a question. Um, yeah. So what's happened to to uh, Modric? <laughs> That's the crazy question. Listen, as long as we're winning, I don't care. But what I will say about Modric is, um, I, I was impressed with him against Barrow um, midweek. Oh my against god! Barrow. Against Barrow. Wait, wait, wait! Oh, wait, wait. Oh, let me finish. Abibi, 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 I do think there's a lot of talent there. You know, I think he's a good decisive passer. He's got good ball striking. He's quick. He can dribble. I, I think there's ability there. I just saw a Barrow Association Football Club is a professional football club based in Barrow, Inverness, Cumbria, England. The club competes in the EFL League Two, the fourth level of the English Football League oh, system. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Baz, what are you saying? Vitesse low move for, for Mudrick, yeah? Let me. Well, I don't know. Hey, Doctor Mike. Wait, 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 wait. Doctor Mike. I remember when Mudrick was on the scene. You were saying he was a man of Gareth Bale. He I does. remember when this. he first broke through. Me and <laughs> I, me and German both stopped. Yeah, so you, you know. Listen, you know I like yeah, you're crazy. You're crazy. Yeah, I'm like, not sure. Question. In what way? Let me ask you a question. Sorry. I was just going to say, who do you think is the better player out of Mudrick and Timo Werner? Mudrick. Mudrick. 
Mudrick. Mudrick. Mudrick. Not even yeah. a question. Easy. I, 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 think, I, I, I think it's easier. I think with him, I think when he gets his next move and he's able to play consistently, I think he's going to show his ability. Oh, you, think, you already accepted that's going to be a next move, yeah? Bro, there's too many men here anyway, man. But we've got like eight attackers. Mm. Where is he, where is he going to? You man have got him for eight years. He's Noni, going nowhere. Greedy. Babs, headline, Noni Madweke, greedy Nigerian. What's your thoughts? Pardon? Wow, that was awesome. greedy Nigerian. What's your what thoughts? What on earth is going on? You know what? Yeah, all the top of pla- all the top attackers, I I do respect it when they try and. Go he's English. Him, he's English. That's a racist him, headline. He's English. With him, he plays he's for not England. Right there, English. But I respect the hunger. I respect the. Hunger Where are you really from, goal. mate? <laughs> but now I do respect the hunger for him, for him to go for goal in this kind of position because I that's think that's, that's a daily. That's a daily. <laughs> Wait. That's a Daily Mail headline. I just that's, respected that's... the hunger. I want to respect the execution. I respect the hunger. Everything. Really respect the hunger, man. <laughs> why? Why? The hunger, why? Man. Why? Why? Do, why is he so greedy, though? I don't, I don't think he's that greedy. I, I just think no, he's, no, I think no, he's no. just a player with goal. With goal, like he, he wants to score goal. He's fighting for his no. life, Dukes. He's he, fighting. He for I, I will say, in the Chelsea Hunger Games, I, I don't know if you knew. But there are quite a few men there. So they're if you don't, all drilling with something. It's, it's you don't so get numbers. You don't leave something. Yeah, it's so yeah, funny. Yeah, sure. I, 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 I know, know, I know but, but actually, <laughs> actually, though, I swear, um, I swear, the the Chelsea contracts they're heavily incentivized. Yeah, so are they? You know, yeah, they they're are. heavily they incentivized. So. Of players, they're, 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 it's like the base will be low, but if you hit some numbers. Boy, and I think, you know what? Yeah, on, okay. on the contract, I think that's why. Fifty percent of your weekly it. salary is tied up in you scoring a goal. I'm that's shooting strong. As soon as I yeah. get in, like, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Ball. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Not Noni. Yeah, he's. I see him. I see him with the you know the snaps with Ruby Rose. Yeah, he's got a lifestyle to maintain. I'm sure. So. <laughs> yeah, he's, a, he's a family man. He's a family man. Drewski <laughs> already, <laughs> said, Drewski already said she's expensive. She's spendy, fam. <laughs> <laughs> But, but what, what I will say on, on that contract thing, who's the bonus? Uh, I think that's why they didn't put Palmer in, in the in the Conference League um, squad. Because obviously, if you start if you start <laughs> if you start getting numbers, boy, <laughs> that would be looking like a Saudi contract. <laughs> wow. hey, you see what you see? Do you see that Aaron Lennon? Do you see that Aaron Lennon interview? Yeah, where he said his first contract at Spurs, they put him on um a like, very low base, and then like. His incentives were crazy, crazy. So then they basically, when he, he first came through, he was just so good that the manager really wanted to play him. It wasn't Spurs, it was Leeds. Was it? Oh, it was Leeds. Yeah, it was, it was Leeds. Leeds. And yeah, yeah. then the, the the director of football basically said, like, yo, we need to sell this guy because we can't afford to, yeah. <laughs> to, keep to pay him. <laughs> yeah, but, but basically, hey, football was a nasty before, game, you know. Before he hit the nasty, nasty they, game. They, like, he was, he was like, he was you know, doing a madness. And one of the games, they basically told the manager, don't start him. Yeah, because, brother, if he scores, we're, we're going bankrupt. Like, we, we've got nothing in the back for this youth. So they, they kept him on the bench. And then that's how Spurs came in and were able to sweep him with a, you know, typical Levy deal. And took Aaron Lennon. Nasty work, bro. It's, it's a nasty game, bro. Agreed, agreed. Let's get on to our awards section. Um... You guys go know the drill. Go around. Give me your winners uh, this week. I'm going to start with the C Day. He was a good dude. Now he's cooked food award. I'm going to start with you, Coops. Who, who you giving your uh, good dude now cooked food award to for this week? Yeah, we mentioned this. Um, we mentioned this guy earlier. It's Gabriel Jesus still. Um, oh, wonderful. That's good. He, I like, that. like now. Now it's not just Havertz snatching his chain. You know, we needed a goal. And 17-year-old Ethan Ranieri is coming on the, off the bench before him. He's coming on um, at 3-2, chicken change minutes. Um, and he still managed to fluff uh, one of the best chances that we created um, in, the, in the match right at the death. And then he's lucky that Havertz uh, managed to, to tuck. But I am fully done with this guy, um, personally. So I'm looking at this now. He is... Third choice in every forward position. Now, you know, he's behind Martinelli and Trossard on the left. He's behind Havertz and Trossard up front. He's behind Saka and Sterling on the right. Um, <clears throat> so I'd, he's 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 finished. So yeah, he needs to he's he's just he's just cooked. 
So we've all been there, man. We had that player who you just, you know, believed in and they just let you down, just releasing swans, man. Um, Yao, good dude, cook food. Who are you giving that award to this week? Um, I think it's only fair that I give it to um, the man that got the red card today, uh, Bruno Fernandes. <laughs> you know, it's been a long time. Yeah, I've been saying it for years since he's touched the Premier League that I think this guy is an absolute fraudster. Uh, the goals were masking over a lot of the nonsense he was doing on the pitch. And finally, finally, after what, four, five seasons of him finding a way of escaping the hatred that I have brought upon his life, we are finally here, ladies and gentlemen. Game week six, and he has delivered nothing but a stinker after stinker each and every game this season. So, Bruno Fernandes, uh, as Morales has allowed me to uh, pick a player uh, that was once a good dude and is now cooked food, uh, welcome <laughs> to your life. Because it's not changing anytime soon, brother. You are absolutely shit and have been shit. And I'm glad that we're finally all seeing the truth about your life. Enjoy, wow. mate. That's, that's wow. Wow. Damn. Yes. Uh, Dr. Mike, you're off of mute. Um, good dude, cook food. Do you know what? This is a play that I actually, before he signed for this club, I liked. I liked, I, I wasn't, but he, I wasn't saying the things Sam Mukagi was saying about him, about best 10 and all that stuff, but but I liked Mason Mount before he signed for United. I thought he's a, he's a decent player. Um, but I think what he's shown at United is that he is, he's cooked. He's cooked. His body, he can't stay fit. And when he plays games, he's not offering anywhere near the quality that he was um, at Chelsea. And people can pretend he's always been this player. I don't think he has, personally. What we're seeing now is a player that is completely cooked. Doesn't look agile and mobile as he once did. Just runs around a lot, really, and just is is pretty poor now. So, uh, Mason Mount, my brother, it might be time to release some swans for you, man. You had a good run. Did he? Champions League in the bag, man. He had a, he had a decent run. Decent. Bad. I think you guys are you're doing a lot. You're very artistic it, use of the word. But, there. but, but in, in terms of mine, I don't know if you remember, Mara, but last season, towards the end of last season, being this season, I had somebody on my NABCAM watch list. A certain manager. South no, you don't come on that much, so I can't. <laughs> Yeah. I had Oliver Glasner on my NABCAM watch. I, I had him on my watch list and I said, I want to see what you can do next season when teams are a bit more comfortable to what you do. You don't have an elise, say, what's going to be your plan? So far this season, I think they've been nothing short of poor. They've lost to Everton now. They're not the best of seasons. For me personally, I think he's he's my cook food. Mm. Oliver Glasner. Fair enough. He's my woman now. I think, the, I think the award started in summer, so I, I, don't, I don't know if it was back end of last season. I'll stay with you. <laughs> I'll stay with you, Babs. Um, this is what it looks like. Award. Um, yeah. Who, who, who's impressed you? Who's really impressed you this week? I think I know the answer. Really? Yeah. Boy, I mean, there's only, there's only one right answer. I mean, Cole Jermaine Palmer. First of his name. Leader of men. You know, I think for me, he really showed what it looks like this week. From goal scoring to play, making all round play. I thought it was brilliant. You know, I think this this is the standard now. You know what was the first bit score four goals what, and a four half. Goals a game. What four goals a game is the standard now, yeah? Hey, this, <laughs> that, this, this, this is the standards. Four <laughs> goals and a half. This this is the standard now. I want to use the next person gonna match it. I want to gonna match the vibe next. All right. So Cole Palmer, you are what it looks like. Yeah, Doctor Mike, this is what it looks like award for the week. I'm I'm gonna go for Cole Palmer as well. I just think I think we're looking at one of the best players in the league. Like we don't need to be. When you say one of like what kind of number range are we talking? Top five? He's in, the, he's in the top ten for me. He's in the top ten for me. I'm, I'm putting yeah. him somewhere in the top ten. Um, I just think his that's a, a really quality player. I think City now probably looking at that thinking we made we made a mistake there because when you watch City play now and where De Bruyne is as a player. If they had him playing off Harland, it Does is game. Does he become a bit, City, though? Yes. That's a good question, it but is, it's, it's, do you not think with a player of his talent, he just, he just comes to like, because he had obviously had games where he came off the bench in the Champions League. You know, he played in um, the Super Cup. 
epic, the, the comedian where he was able to show ability for City. Well, obviously, it wasn't anywhere to this degree, but I feel like you, you surely there must have been a time where he would have like eventually got to a level of like. I think even City. Babs, you make a good point there. At the start of last season, I was watching him play for City a couple of times and be their best player. If he would come on and in cameos and chasing the game, he'd be their best player in those spells he was coming on. And when he was starting games, where it was in preseason, he was one of their brightest players. So the talent from this kid has been quite clear for some time. And now he's been given a platform at Chelsea where the team's been built around him. He's showing it. So I, I can imagine mm. a world where he eventually played more and more for City. And then before you know it, he becomes a starter. And him and him and, and Palmer have struck up, him and Harlan, so struck up a devastating partnership. Oh, that, would, that, would been nasty. that would have been so, nasty. Yeah. So I, I think Carl Palmer was God. like... <clears throat> Most people have known Paul Palmer since the age of 15 yeah. and known this kid is going right to the top. So it's not been a secret. The talent has been, been clear. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I agree to that level, though, because I think, um, like, Babs, like, I, I knew the guy was talented, but I don't think people put him as doing this. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he's maybe coming not this level. Not this level. Him coming into Prem and, you know, bagging four, four goals. Like, I think, what, last season, there was he did back-to-back hat-tricks. In, yeah. in in the game as well, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I I I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't have ever you know like put um put him here, um. But I think he definitely is a player that I've liked previously and thought, yeah, this guy needs to leave City to to really play. But you know, I think now we're seeing him. I definitely believe that yeah, he he, he this talent would have shone anywhere personally. Yeah. I don't think you can predict a player scoring four goals back to back hat tricks, but I think the talent mm, level we yeah. always knew he'd be comfortable at this level at the very least. That's that's what I, I think has been clear mm. for a while. Another player I want to give a shout out to be fair is, is your boy Ethan Enwaneri, because I've seen him play twice this week now. And in midweek he looks really, really sharp. And I think off the bench, because I was hate watching the game. Mm. And when he came off the bench, it was quite clear the quality of the player. Like I don't need to see too much sometimes when it comes to a talent level that's that high. When I'm seeing you control it in tight spaces of guys around you, very, very comfortable, off both feet, um, right, makes right decisions all the time. When I'm seeing that, a player do that in short spells like that, I don't need to see too much to know that he's a good player. So, yeah, he's, I'm a big fan of his, but I, I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't make too much of an impact this season because I, I don't, don't want you guys too happy, man. But he looks a good, he looks a good talent, man. Yeah, I think Good is probably selling it short. I think, um, like I've said, both ends of the spectrum, the guys were really bad and really good. It's, you don't need to see a big sample size for it to really yeah. show. So, it's the guys in the middle. It's the, the guys, guys in the middle. middle who, like, is situational and they've got some strengths and some weaknesses and in the bad team, they're going to look really bad. But in a team that's well-structured, a manager who's using their talents to the best of their ability, they'll look better than perhaps they probably are. Um, it's, it's where the kind of real discerning eye comes from. For me, with Cole, I think it would just been hard. He wouldn't have been a penalty taker at City good chunk of his goals come from the penalty spot. I think Pep Guardiola's play style and how much he doesn't really let players off the shackle. I think very few players at City are kind of given that green light to just go out there and cook. Um, I think he's top top t- top table talent, but in terms of being able to put up the numbers, he can he's put up a team like Chelsea. I think he joined at a perfect time where they were like mid-table-ish, languishing. They were looking for somebody with a lot of talent and somebody with personality, actually, to take the reins and execute. And that's the big thing with him. So much personality and courage. As he well just talks about it. Like, and they try and, like, gas him up after the game and he's kind of like, yeah, that's like, cool, cool, isn't it? Like, yeah, cool. Yeah. On, to, on to the next one. <laughs> on to the next one. On to the indeed. Yeah. Um, Yao, who have you got as uh, your This Is What It Looks Like award winner for this week, sir? You know, like, yeah, I can't lie. It would have been Palmer, but I can't even believe I'm doing this. This is nasty work. I hope I never have to do this again. Yeah. But I'm actually going to give it to Gabriel because okay. listen, he he is frightening from set pieces. What 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 he did to Carl Walker? Yeah, <laughs> like Carl Walker's baby mother ain't even done nothing like that to him. Bro. This was an absolute clappage, bro. So yeah, I'm gonna give it to Gabriel because uh, he's he's really stepped up to the plate, showing man, look, this is how you be become a threat from set pieces. Can't deny it. So you're not rating the defending, just a just a set piece business, yeah. Uh, I mean, the defending is one thing in it, but obviously certain man didn't strap themselves on. I'm not even talking about football no more. I'm just letting you know, man failed outside and on the pitch against the same man. So such is life, bro. You have to give it to Gabriel because. 
with these set pieces, Arsenal are just consistently dangerous. I hope it fails. And I hope this time next week, I'm telling you guys that he's absolutely cooked food. But until then, I'm just going to be honest. I like that premise. Uh, Cougs, uh, this is what it looks like award winner for this week. Um, I'll go with Saka. Um, I thought it was unbelievable um, against Leicester. And that uh, Christensen guy is going to be having nightmares about him for, for a while. <laughs> nice one. Uh, Babs, who's you got a Saudi bound this week? Oh, that's a great one. Because yeah. traditionally, you know, the, the obvious aren't. But I think we should offer Saudi a two for one deal, buy one get one with Manuel Ugarte. You know, he's only just arrived in the British shores, but I think there's enough time to finagle the border authority to say he's just here in the stop of a flight, but the final destination is Saudi. So, Manuel Ugarte, for me, you are this week's Saudi Bound Award winner. Goodbye. <laughs> wow. Yeah, who you got a Saudi bound this this week, sir? Uh, I think uh, you know Babs has obviously stolen who I would have gone with. Well done, Babs. I agree. So I'm just going to pick somebody from United as well. Um, so I'm going to say it's time, innit? Rashford, you've done a good job, innit? You really have. We've we've seen some great stuff from you, but I think it's time for you to go and make sure that we've got some good relations with the Saudi people um, because I think you can do some some great negotiation for us you know get us some oil uh, so pack your bags and join Manuel at Heathrow not even Heathrow go to Gatwick you know see if you can get a good deal there and please uh, make your way out of the nation yeah. uh, Dr Mike Saudi, Saudi bound Rashford as well I think this is a player who more than more than anything, it's for him. It's for his sake more than it is for anything else. He needs. He I needs don't, to. Be. I, don't, I, I don't think it's for his sake at all. It's for his sake, bro. The, the United, so. the, the, the you know Gary Neville going on about him all the time. You know Roy Keane on the overlap talking about him all the time. He needs a break. Go to Saudi. Go to Al Hilal. Go and chill with the boys over there. Have a good time because right now he's even broken the cycle because before it was be one good season, one bad season, one good season. Now it's two poor seasons back to back. So he's, we're not even getting a good season. I don't, think that's, I don't think that's happened. Don't. That's generally a cycle that happens with him. No, no, I don't think season. two poor seasons back to back is where do you have the authority to to, to, to make that call, sir? But he's, he's not been good this season, mate. I'm watching it with my eyes. This is the point that I have. 11 times. 11 Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, Mariah's not happy with the back-to-back -back Rashford shouts, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're fine. They're fine. They're just... They're fine. Like, obviously, you guys listen to Logo, so you know where I stand with him. I'm just taking umbrage to a particular statement Dr. Mike made in regards to back-to-back -back bad seasons. Well, let's see. It's developing yeah. It's developing into what could be another bad season for the, for, for the young man. So like The previous good season, he didn't really start it with any much better numbers than he has right now. So it's not, no, I, don't care about num I don't care about numbers. I'm not a numbers guy. I you literally are. could not you send care me about numbers. numbers. You send me numbers all the time. I, I don't. I, 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 don't think I am not a numbers guy. I don't care. Rash scored five goals in this period. The way he's performing, this is not what it looks like. And we know that Marcus Rashford is best, is a far more competent footballer than what he's showing. I think he's just not at the level performance wise where he should be as a player. And so if he think... scored five goals in his first seven games, you'd be here saying he should go to Saudi Arabia. Well, I'm overdoing it such a, a bit yeah. there, but I think the performance yeah. level has just been so poor that. Mm. You can't justify it. You can't. I don't think anyone's trying to. I'm just again. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just, just letting you know that, the performance was not good enough, brother. That, again, don't disagree. Just taking umbrage to that particular. Well, that, well, you can take umbrage, brother, but I'm saying the performance levels not me good enough. We, I, do we agree on that? Just let's let's clap. Do we agree on that, brother? Yeah, give and take. Give and take. No or give and taking. I literally said I agree with that. Okay, I'm, so let's move. Let's move on, on to the next you, one. Do you want to share your? Do you want to share your one next, brother? I'll, I'll host it now. Ah, I'll, host it now. No, no, I'll host it now. No, 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 I'll host it now. Ryan, let me host it, brother. Let me host it. 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 Your mute button works, right? Yeah. Um, Cougs. 
Saudi 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 Saudi. Yeah, Ten Hag, man. Ten Hag. He's got a. Uh, That's a more got... logical amount of sense. Thank you. Yeah, he's, got, he's got. He's I got. He's got. I don't think he can get to Saudi. You know. Why not? No, 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 no. If he tries the lines, because you you know what they do in Saudi if you lie. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't have to chop <laughs> off the. Do that, they don't have to chop off the. They don't have to chop off the. Oh my goodness! Hey, yeah, he 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 needs to join. Um, What's it? Cool, cool, cool coat looking guy, Steven Gerrard. Yeah, go, go out there and and, and, <laughs> and wow. with with the other with the other fraud, yeah, that wow. people thought were going to be a cold manager, and it turned out to be a bum. Yeah, that's where he needs to go, man. <laughs> Ten Hag, I've had enough of him. I've actually had enough of him. Like I hear honestly, you. I yeah. Today, today was actually such a travesty, right? Because mm. I personally think. You know, United fans have had a little bit of hope based on some of the performances so far. And I think 20, the FC 20 game and this game has brought people back down to earth with a, a loud bang. Because, yeah. you know, people see Masrawi playing quite well. De Ligt coming in. He's doing better than Maguire. Uh, Ugarte, the next one. Oh, he must come in and he might be quite good as well, right? We've seen Ericsson sort of roll back the years a couple, uh, uh, a little bit since the international break. And they were feeling, you know, oh, we, we might be onto something here. Pop, top four push. Da, 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 da. And no, this guy is ass. He yeah. is ass. And this week, I think people are now seeing that, you know, there's no hope with this man. You know, he needs to go. He needs to go to his level, either back to the Bundas. Um, where was he even? But he was in Holland. Eredivisie. He, 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 yeah. he wasn't even the main manager in the Bundesliga. He, he, was, he was a side man. Yeah, he was the, the he, he was, was the, the, the the boss uh, by by and B right. So mm. yeah, he needs to he needs to call it he needs to call it quits and go go Saudi get his paycheck, man. Fair. Um, I'm going to give one um, Saudi bound Mohamed Salah. Just putting that name out there. <laughs> Based on any sources, anyone has made before now, putting that name out there. Wait, wait, wait. So, Let's why is it? <laughs> not explaining Mike, myself. Mike, no, you, you need to explain it. <laughs> Mike, don't buy it, man. I don't, Mike, don't buy it. I can let you know. Don't buy it, brother. He is taking the biggest part. He is choked. I don't to let you know. No. Is the host not going to back up his claim? <laughs> <Get him up. laughs> <laughs> All right, Ken lost. Ken lost. Ken lost. My head's not even gone. <laughs> 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 I'm That's the only award I'm voting for today. I'm not going to be explaining myself. Let's move on to the next one. Right. <laughs> Lamb come. Who we got under surveillance? Dan Cooks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even ask just, for an explanation now. Good Just, just give me the light. Just give me the light. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, the link, man. I'm onto him. I'm onto him. I'm watching him. Understandable. Uh Dr. Mike, Nabcam, who you got under surveillance this week, sir? You're mute. <laughs> <laughs> He's even on meeting so afterwards. That's the funniest thing about it. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I'm crying. I'm crying. Yeah, it's, bro, it's it's one of those ones. It's... <laughs> yeah. Righteous. Oh, gosh. Do you know what on 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 surveillance? I'm I'm keeping a really close eye on all developments at Newcastle Football Club. Still, I'm still keeping an eye on them. Just partly because I know James is going to be upset with that one, and I want him to tweet us. <laughs> um, yeah. and be angry, but I'm still keeping a close eye. I had good performance on the weekend against against City. They played really well, but I'm still keeping a close eye there because I think 
bit of tension between Eddie Howe and the board. Let's see how that develops. Cool. Nice one. Thank you. Babs, Nabcam, who have you got under surveillance, sir? Sandra Tonali. I, I, I know Bet365 is looking at you like the goblin, the, the, gob, the green goblin mask in Spider-Man. Right? I need to see how long are you going to be able to last, you know, keeping on the straight and narrow between now and the end of the season. So, Sandra Tonali, you are my, you are my Nabcam of the week. You're watching him, yeah? And, yeah, who have you got um, under surveillance? Nabcam. Uh, I think a serious contender for this would be Mohamed. No, no, I'm joking. I was going to say Mohamed. Salah, but... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> my God. He said what? Again? Oh, my goodness. All right, wait. Let me be serious. Let me bring it back in. Oh, no. I'm going to... I want to say under surveillance for me is Manuel Ogarte. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's absolutely trash. He's got. Hey, trash. listen, I can't lie. You're, you're, you're wasting money on, with, with that camera. That camera oh there, man. You are wasting money with that camera. It's true. There. He's not good. He's not good at all. Oh, my God. Yeah, Manuel Ogarte. Shocking. Fair enough. Fair enough. I've got one more award. Hope you guys, if you listen to the pod, are familiar with it. It's the ESI. I know I have talent award for. The player who you feel is underrated can be a young player, can be an experienced player, can be someone who's halfway through their careers. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Coogs, ESR underrated award winner of the week. Um, yeah, in 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 honor of the the Halen graduate, the reward award is named after. I've got to go for Ethan and Maneri. Um, he only came on, I think, the 84th minute or something, but you know, really added something to our game. Um, first action, you know, taking a ball on the run, forcing the keeper into a save. Like if it was me managing, I'm slapping him in against PSG straight away. You know, I think this kid had a superb midweek game, scored twice um as well. First start for, for the club. Um, and I think, yeah, this guy's ready to cook something devious. Yes. Bro, there, like I said, there are some talents you don't need to wait too long to see it. When you see it, you see it. He definitely seems to me like he's one of those ones. Fair. Who's your ESR under, underrated um, award winner for this week, Dr. Matt? Do you know what? It's someone that I think he got a lot of flack, and probably rightly so, based on his, his price tag and, and um, how much the club paid for him. But I think in recent months, he's actually been really, really good in his Caicedo. I think it's gone under the radar how good he's been recently. Um Whenever I watch Chelsea now in, in the last couple of weeks, he's, he's come through one of their better players, um, one of their best players, rather. Um, and I think we're getting to a point now where he's replicating what he did for Brighton for Chelsea. You know, being really dominant in midfield, winning duels, carrying the ball up the pitch, just kind of being everywhere. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've been impressed so far. I don't think many people are making noise about him, apart from Chelsea fans. But whenever I watch, I've been impressed so far. So, uh, I'm going to give it to Caicedo. Nice one. And <clears throat> Babs. Who's your ESR underrated player of the week? For me, I think it's um, George Eleni Kenner. Um, young striker about Monaco. He just made his move from Real Antwerp. Um, I think he's one of the new young strikers that's going to be on the scene. That's going to, that's going to really make waves. He scored a goal against Barcelona to win the game for them. It's a big week or in the last Champions League game. And I think for him, for me, I think he's like my rated. Um, so. Nice one. <clears throat> I not ask how many four games you've watched. Keep, keep that close to your heart. Hey, listen, um, man. I've, I've, I asked that, man. I've, 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 been, I've, I've been the lead investor for a while now, man. I'm, I'm, out, I'm out here. I'm out here. Okay. I mean, my comment? Don't buy it. <laughs> don't buy it. Come on. You're better than this. Uh, let's finish up with what some... What am I doing? <laughs> That's true. You're not. <laughs> let's finish up with some... Dr. Mike, he's so angry at himself. <laughs> I'm not even angry, bro. All I said was, can the host explain <laughs> what he just said? Yeah. Just explain yourself. You can't just keep smiling and think that's gonna <laughs> <you're doing laughs> the whole time. He's like this. <laughs> I've been two times, two times. Yeah, Mariah, he's he's been stung a little bit by some comments. Yeah, and then he's bit back straight away. <laughs> <laughs> he, crashed, he crashed Yao at the start of the pod, yeah. He crashed me. He hit the trophy thing. <laughs> and then he's, 
Crashed, he smashed the plate and knocked my head. Bam, picking mercy. All I said was, Can you explain yourself? That's all I said. I just want the man to explain himself. He's getting me back because I said I'm going to host the phone now. That's what I said. Because the possible oh, before I had his head on Mars. That's what happened. Uh, let's finish up with some listeners' questions. We've got quite a few actually. Uh, first one is from Fee Fahi Fofum. Hello, brothers. I hope you're well. To the United fan on the panel this weekend, of the three options, which would you prefer? Number one, ETH stays till the end of the season. Two, rude caretaker, Southgate next season. Three, Southgate now. Thank you and God bless. Um, <laughs> you, number bro. one, uh, ETH stays till the end of the season. Like, you know, it's better the devil, you know, I say. And getting rid of him to only ultimately end up with Southgate. I think it's only going to continue the pain. So <laughs> let him just collapse this whole season, and we get somebody. We get somebody different in the in, in the summer. Uh, got a, a few questions from Tops Eight Eight One of New Spurs Order. First one: If Werner was to do a job that didn't involve kicking a ball, what would it be? Um, he would be um, restocking shelves at Marks and Spencer's. I think he'd be an Olympic athlete, probably just a sprinter. No chance. It's really quick. He's just really quick. No chance. If that's all he had to focus on, <clears> every <throat> day, just being really quick, he would. He will, st- he will stumble out of the blocks. He, he remember the Haitian guy that done the celebration and hit the first hurdle. That would be Verna. He hit like every hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> he really did good. like he did like five celebrations. <laughs> like he was, uh, did the LeBron James. Did the Cole Palmer. He's too quick to not be an athlete of some sort, man. No chance. That, that I've never I've never seen he's a guy in my life part of football that he's not good at. Just running up and down, straight lines. Come morale. On. Even even guy, today man. when he was running, yeah, I felt like he didn't understand what a stride pattern actually was. Man had four different strides. In one one straight line, nah, man, he he can't do nothing correct. I bet he, I bet he files his taxes late every single year. Like he can't do nothing correct. Like nothing. <coughs> Bills are, are mispayments. Like everything is wrong. Yeah, yeah. He, he probably says happy birthday to his missus on the wrong day. It's a mess. Like I don't believe anything he could do apart from like, in your like top three list of worst players you've seen play for Spurs. Is he in it? 100 percent It's him and then anyone that Tobias is like. So you know, Hoybier could be there and Winks. You know, that's one hundred percent one so million. Top of your head, that's your top three, yeah. Yeah. Top three. Right Just, like because we all we all can agree that Toby has a massive affiliation for for mid territory players, you know. So I don't know why, but you know, he, he seems to to like these mid players. Yeah, you, you, we, 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 like, you, you have pride and passion, no? You know, but mm. with it's, it's, it's something completely different, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if it's like you know, he's you know, he's just doing it because you know they play for Spurs or something like that. But nah, man. Once he, once yeah, the day he's, I, I, I need to, I need to defend my boy here because yeah, I swear oh. you, I swear you are a big Emerson Royal fan. Yeah. No, nope, I'm not a big Emerson yeah, Royal I fan. Swear, that is, that you, is nasty talk. Yeah, what mm. I said when Emerson Royal came, I was like, look, I'm willing to give any player time, and mm. I did. And then he showed himself to be a Bolivian. I'm the one that called him a Bolivian. Now, we all know on national TV that Tobias went online and said he doesn't think Harry Winks is a rubbish player. This was word for word what he said. And I told him on that day, brother, you will regret those words. (laughs) And you regret it. Hot take, I don't think he's a rubbish player either. (laughs) Mo Salah. How highly, this is from Tops again, how highly do you rank Van der Ven in Premier League centre-backs? Not that high. I wouldn't. Not that high. I don't think, I don't think he's top five. Not, can you give us a quantifiable number? I'd say, say there's, there's 20 teams, they've got two, let's say they've got at least two starting centre-backs. That's at least 40 off the bat. Like, where, where would you rank him in Premier League centre-backs? We say I think, not I think he makes top 10. Is he better than Romero for you, Yao? 
That's how yes. it's going to go. The fact you're not sure. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm, 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 yeah. <laughs> do you know, do you know what? Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do, you know, do you know why I'm not sure? It's because I think Romero is a better one-on-one -on -one defender. But I Mickey, think Romero's better all round. He's better on the ball as well. Romero's just better. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I don't think I don't think the gap between them is that big. I don't I, think I don't think I don't think top ten's the worst shout to be honest. Just listen. Yeah, I think him. I think it's top ten. Well, we can go through it. We can go through it. So yeah. Van Dyke's. Yeah, I, I can't lie. I ain't trying to go through no set about top ten, man. We can go for it. Do the about top 10, man. He, he ain't in. I don't. I think Van der Ven's on the cusp of it, maybe, but not quite. That's what, yeah, I wouldn't say he's like. Like high up. In I the think world. I think I think Van der Ven is a similar level to Konate personally. Do you think so? I think Konate. <laughs> I, 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 I don't say a big. I don't say a big gap between them. <laughs> what did you say, Mike? You object to what? I object strongly to that claim. <laughs> Ve vehemently object to, to, to that claim, in fact. Do you think, I, why I, do you I, think uh, there's a big gap? Why do you think there's a big gap? I don't think there's a big gap. I wouldn't say, I'm, I wouldn't, I, again, I'm not the sort of person who uses polemic language. Oh, X is clear of Y, but I think Kamase is better than Van than, than Der Ven. Why? Why do you think he's, he's a better one-for-one -one defender? I think he's better winning his duels in terms of aerial and on the, on the ground. I think he's actually underrated on the ball. Um, Kanase is where he breaks lines regularly in the game, four or five times in the game. I think the key thing for, for, for Kanase has always been the staying fit thing and getting a run of games. Um, and whenever he's got a run of games for us and, and played consistently, he's always let, he's he's never let us down. Like he's never really let us down. I think there have been a few. Of course, there's everything about how people have performances. I think Kanate, I think Kanate is better, but I I think they're similar level. That's that's just how I view it. I I don't think, I don't think if, there's if any... anything, I'll put Kanate at nine, Van der Ven at ten. How about that? I, I I would put Kanase higher personally. I do think Kanase is becoming an underrated player, which is fine by me. I don't mind. How high are you putting Kanate? I again, I, I I would put him somewhere between. If I think it off the top of my head, somewhere between sixth and eighth, somewhere in that territory is where I'd put him. I wouldn't be putting him as low as nine or tenth. Six or eighth, somewhere. Yeah, I'd put him somewhere there personally, but that's just me. You, I have. You, I have. You think Kanate is better than Diaz. Yeah. Ruben Diaz. Oh, we. Mm, it's close. I think it's close. There was, there was the I, hesitation uh, again, man. Again, I, again, the hesitation. Yeah, the hesitation. He's giving it away, man. He's giving it away. Yeah, man. but it's. But it's, like I said, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to disrespect and play like Diaz, who I think has has achieved a lot. But in terms of, I have a preference. So I guess with Diaz, I think Diaz is probably better. Given Diaz's consistency and, and his and his current level, but I think Konate is more. I think, I, I, think Diaz, I think Diaz is crazy overrated. Still, I can't lie. I yeah, he's... yeah, well, probably. Dude, yeah. You, dude, do you have Diaz over Konate or Konate over Diaz? I have Konate over Diaz. Okay, that's yeah. nice. I don't. Think, yeah. I don't. I don't think. I don't think. Yeah. 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 Anyway, but, I, I would put Konate on with to, to have another pod when we've like gone away, mm. done a bit of research because people are yeah, doing yeah, like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I think on that one, but I think Kanate is somewhere six to eight, is what I'll say, and he's better than yeah, Van der Ven. So. It's not I think Kanate is better than Mo Salah. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is from <laughs> the Alpha Frick. What will United's goal difference be at the end of the season? So, right now, it's minus three, minus 12. <laughs> no, I think it'll get like it'll be like. It'll be two. It'll be something nope. like two. So you think with in the remaining thirty-two games, we'll score two more goals? Oh no, we'll have to score five more goals than what we concede to make up. Yeah, for the there'll be a thrashing in there. We have a thrashed, like we haven't, really thrashed, home. we haven't really thrashed anybody under. You co you conceded what sixty plus a... goals last season? Yeah, you conceded sixty plus goals last season. I think you're still going to concede sixty plus goals this season. I think mm -hmm. you're gonna score a total. Just between... see, they conceded they conceded 58 last season. Okay, so they're gonna concede 60 yeah. this season. How about that? And I think they're gonna score between. No, I think they're gonna concede about 64 goals. And they're gonna score about 50 to 52. So minus 12. I think the range is between minus two and two, somewhere in that ballpark. That's a pretty tight range. Fair yeah. enough, man. Numbers. What was your PhD in statistics? I just I teach that at university. I thought you didn't like that. Question. We didn't like that. I don't. I don't mind them. I, don't, I, I evidently don't mind them as a teacher. Nah, Doctor Doc, Mike, what's going on today, man? What's going on today? What's going on today? I'm not a stats guy. Yeah, I teach it. 
the university. <laughs> oh, oh my god. This how you understand statistics. I think the key thing the key thing to understand here, guys, is <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> this is insane. This is about teaching our youth. <laughs> the, the key, the key oh, thing. Next generation <laughs> of math professors. Oh. Oh my God. The key thing here, guys, is football oh. is not entirely an intellectual activity, right? So when I say I'm not a numbers guy, what Mike, I mean is cut the cameras. When I watch this game, <laughs> cut the cameras. This is insane. Hey, you know, you know, listen to that, right? Mike is just taking yeah. a massive sip of water. You know, you know, you know, the goalkeeper can see the absolute mad thing. He just quickly goes inside the goal. That pep, pep special. <laughs> This is, a, this is a hell of a performance. Oh, uh, a, <laughs> see, oh, business only. Really? Who should United start in midfield now that Bruno and possibly Mount are not available for the next Prem game? Oh, snap. Who you got? Oh, Who no. Who do you have? It's, got Casem- it's going to be Casemiro. Oh, and May- and Mainu's injured as well. Mainu's injured. I'm He's injured. Up. We've got Ugarte, we've got Casemiro, we've got Ericsson. Chai! Wait, Mariah, you, United got next. I think that's, I think that's the three. That Mariah, who, who, who have United got next? Uh, we've got, in the league, we've got Aston Villa. Everybody, hey. tune, everybody tune into that game. That's going to be a <laughs> cool Have you Wait, Mariah, have you had a game that's not been on TV so far? That's a good question. Uh, I, mean, I know Villa's on TV. This is going to be the first one, I think. I think this is now the on Sunday. PM on Sunday, yeah. What and they're not showing Villa no. United. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm gonna fight. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna I'm 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 find a way. I'm gonna be there somewhere somehow. I'm a well, there's a way. will, there's a way. There's a will, there's a way. There's a hey, way. Mariah, bleep, bleep, bleep out when I said fire stick, yeah. Oh, bro, man, <laughs> you said it twice. <laughs> you, said it, you, told, you said it and now you told me to bleep out when you said it. <laughs> oh, oh god, around the world. I just bleep this whole section. I'm uh, just getting rid of it, man. Uh, oh, next question. Uh, Mr. Math 93, who is your favorite Barclays man player? Mm. Dr. Mike, your face is kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, oh, my... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh my god! Oh, he's, man. Man. he's like cleaning his blade. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my thing. goodness! This is an absolute mad thing. This is a bit of blaming. Wow! The thing I, is, I blame morale. Personally, I blame morale. I'm bro, I can't. Me. I can't even say anything on this flipping point, man. <laughs> goodness me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, who is your favorite Barclays man player, guys? Um, Stylian Petrov. Oh, that's nasty. That's quality. Nice. That you're going way back. Michu um, or Dimitri Paye? Ah, oh, you yeah. stole my man. Yeah, nice. yeah I was gonna go, was gonna go Paye as well. Perhaps Paye 15 16. I was, I, was, I, was, I was gonna go Paye as well, but you know who I'll go for? Oh, actually, no, I can't use him. Who can I go with? I can't even believe I'm going to say this one. Nazri. Is he a Barclays man? I think I think Arsenal Nazri can can be a Barclays man. Yeah, towards the back end. That's a fringe Barclays. That's a fringe Barclays man. It's outside the top teams, isn't it? It's like those there, isn't it? Overly sort of guys who um, made a name. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Darren Ben. Oh, slap yourself. Right. No, I'm not having that. That's I'm not mine. having that. That's disgusting. That's mine. Why? That's, I hate his Why? I hate his guts. Oh. I hate his guts. Oh, it's a, it's a hey, no, I hate it, bro. I hate his guts, bro. I don't even like the way he talks on TV. 
Facio, bro. Complex. Um, wow. Cool. Yeah, I'll go for uh, Morton Gamps Pedersen. I oh, have man. stopped in him. I believed. I believed in him. I believed he could ride Blackburn out and then cut, but it just never quite, never quite happened for him. Last few questions. Uh, Wizard Shy. How do folks think about managers having power in scouting and talent ID with transfers away from sporting directors? Does it better to do some in name of let's back the manager? That grammatically, that's a whole mess. But basically, just saying that. Do you I think managers should means. have um, power in scouting and talent ID? And take that away from no. sporting director. I think they should but, always have a seat at the table, and that's how most yeah. clubs operate. Where there's a so a manager wants to play a particular side of play, the scouts and 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 those the powers that be kind of are the ones that are doing the looking crunch of the numbers. And when they come to the manager with look, this is the, these are the players we're looking at. We're going to go for this one, and the manager can have a say, but he hasn't got the ultimate kind of like he doesn't give it the green light. He can just have mm. a say in the discussion. That's how I see it. Well, you see, you've seen what happened to United, right? With Ten Hag. That's a different approach, though. Ten Hag is literally saying, can you get me X and they're getting X. They're not crunching numbers, bro. You don't crunch numbers and come with Anthony, I'm, I'm pr- unless your numbers are... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it was. <laughs> it was It was literally that. He got the final say. Yeah. That's not... Sometimes you just said, get me this player. Hence, the bias towards players who've either played in the Netherlands or played for Ten exactly, Hag. Exactly, exactly. So it's, it's a biased the approach. That's been the transfer strategy, pretty much. Played for, yeah. played for Ten Hag, played in the Netherlands, signed to his agency. That's not, that last one was nasty, by the way. Yeah, that one was nasty, yeah. but you know what? I kind of respect it because I did the same. <laughs> okay. yeah, he's my boy. He's my boy. Sign him. <laughs> <laughs> Sign my boy. That's <laughs> what this crowd, Dracula. Are the United fans who claim Lissandro's height wouldn't be a problem now eating humble pie? Has he conceded a header? Like, like I'm trying to think. Like, I don't feel like his height has been an issue. I, I think his height think is, is, more... is kind of implicitly an issue because he plays to his yeah. height, if that makes sense. Mm. He yeah, overcompensates. And it's, and it's, yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's, it's his, his height, general lack of is implicitly an issue. It's, it's like, yeah. like it's <laughs> cool how he, plays like, he, car- he carries it with him in yeah. every he carries, he does, he carries yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I agree with that. I think his just general lack of physicality is a big problem for United at the back, to be honest. Like, you can't play a high line. Um, he, he he sort of has to retreat towards his own goal. Um, he's not great, you know, in the wide areas. Like, I think, yeah, it, it, even if you're not saying, oh, yeah, he's not getting beasted in the air, this, that, and the other. But I think that's because he's not, he doesn't really compete in the aerial duels that you need well, your centre to compete in. And he overcompensates by trying to be overly aggressive. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's not. I, think, good I definitely think it's the issue, man. You can't come to the prem with five foot three and, and well, an well, attitude. You can really. Five yeah, can, can Carago one, Carago one. Oh gosh, uh, Elliot online. Are Manchester United currently on the same level as Newcastle? A once prominent Northern club now struggling for success. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad. They're that mocking. Is, They're mocking. That is, that's, that's, so that's a brilliant question. Now. I'll give him that. Yeah, he said that. Up. Up. Yeah, no, I feel like that, that's that's Newcastle or ever levels like that, though. To be yeah, honest, no, so. exactly. I, I don't think. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's, it's what you know. What it was, it's, it's a good jab. That's what that question is. It's a good jab. Yeah. Good little tussle. Fair. <clears throat> Like Mike's face is king. That's what's making me laugh. Oh, what am I doing? He's cleaning that. He's not even a blade anymore. He's playing like old. this. He's oiling his Glock nine, boy. <laughs> no smiles. <laughs> Eyes <laughs> low. <laughs> Walking. Wow. Uh, next one from Save Business Only. Chances of ETH gone by next international break. Obviously, that's post Port- Porto, post Aston Villa. 60%. Boy. Yeah, he's not got many all eyes on me slots left, man. I'll be real. I don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's true. It's the, the all the slots. <laughs> you know, they're free PMs, yeah? People don't watch it's, it's, them. We've done oh, our job. Lucky, man. Honestly, Bruno Fernandez didn't get sent off. Different game. But when people watched it, because you know, everyone's watching their own team, they're always just stunned again about how shit we are. 
I, I know United are bad, but United are bad, man. Like, everyone's always, like, shocked all over again by how bad we are. What's and funny so is Dan made a good point last week where he says there's, like, a veneer of competence at times. So mm. when you watch the United game, there'll be, like, a 10, 15-minute spell. You're like, hold on a minute. Like, are they, are they okay? And then you just see the collapse completely. It's like, no, nah, they are actually crap. <laughs> it's that veneer of competence that fools you. Just that veneer, you know? Yeah, just whatever. Cool. Um, bait face Nate. Dear Disu. Oh, this is not here. Some words on the retirement of Varan. And then thoughts on how the below meme went. And the meme is Kanate, Kanate 36 million, Varan 42 million, and Kunde 25 plus Zuma being like the you know the normal dragons, and then Ben White 50 million being like the Dipsy Dragon. So in, in lieu of this not being here, thoughts obviously Varan, people consider him mainly a legend of the game, announced his retirement this uh this week after another serious injury. Any any words releasing swans for Varan? I think I think he's had a great career, man. I, I think it's, it's a career where you just kind of you kind of banter it, you know, to stay in Madrid for that long, you know, play at that level, with as much as he did, both internationally and at club level. You know, it's as near perfect careers as you can have. So, I mean, hopefully he returns, enjoys his retirement. He's living in a lovely place in Como. So, you know, what? what we're going to stay there, yeah, just stay by the lake. Yeah. Hey, listen, that's if that's me, I'm doing that. Hey, like, think about it. He's lived in Madrid. He's lived in Como. Mm. We'll I'm stay with those two. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he's, he's living some really nice places, so and he's, and he's, and he's, and he's been successful, so you know, he's had a great career. Yeah, no, yeah. it's true. I yeah. think, I think, yeah, I agree with what Bab says. He's had a great career, he was a good dude. I was going to finish it by saying, now nah, he's cooked food. <laughs> no, nah, I don't mean it like that. Nah, he, he's had a great career, like, yeah, there's not really much you can say. It's just unfortunate how it ended, yeah. but that's his life, bruv. Just go and enjoy your. Your little seaside days by this lake and all that kind of stuff. Enjoy. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts on the below meme? <clears throat> the Kanate Varan Kunde white meme? This is a couple of two, three, two, three summers ago. No? No thoughts. I mean, I think Ben White has been underrated by a lot. He was underrated at that time when people signed him and he's still underrated. I think he's, a, he's, he's been a solid performer for Arsenal. And they got... The, the annoying thing about Arsenal, they've got a lot of good depth and defence. Like Timber came in yesterday, or he came in last week and stayed in the side yesterday and was one of their best players yesterday. So, yeah, it's annoying they've got that many options in defence, man. <laughs> hey, you. Yeah. Uh, COC, COC Virgin. Off to a bad start for Ineos. Bad transfer window and kept ETH. Is it looking spooky for Ineos? Do you see them turning things around? I mean, you I never think... know about football. I think I think they they should be judged when they appoint their guy. <clears throat> I yeah. think that's the biggest move they're gonna they're gonna make. I think it's it's I just think it's kind of dumb when they don't just do the clean cut and just get cracking mm. straight away because ultimately this summer window they bought more guys that Ten Hag wanted. I assume in Masrawi, in Delict, um, in Xerxes as well. So hey, that, that, that that's a nasty window. I think about it, you know. He's, he's he's got his two yeah. guys. He's got his he's got his ex-buying guy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, so it's up, it's up been nasty going over there, man. Really yeah, so, <laughs> so if yeah, the next this is like guy... you know a football manager when you have a club and you move to another club and you sign your your, your same players. That's this is exactly what he's done. But in yeah. real life, so I think I think I think ultimately, like you've now get, spent another. 200 M's or whatever it was, I don't know, on the guy that you know is not your guy, mm. um, which I think is a bit silly. So I, ultimately, I do think um, you'll have to judge them when they get their own guy in personally and then and then you go from there. Fair. Uh, Don Mikhail, 17. Xerxes has good link-up play at times, but he lacks running power and never looks convincing when finishing chances. Maybe it's just me, but all I see is a tall Lacazette. Thoughts on this comparison? Do you, do, do you know what it was Xerxes? I, I thought I think he's he's how, how do I explain? I don't think he's as slow as he as he is. If that makes sense, I think the way he moves it makes him look slow. Slow, if you get what I mean. But in terms of him as an all round player, I, I didn't watch him at Bologna. Um, I know he was obviously he was a wonder kid when he was at Bayern, but I need to see a lot more for me to make an actual judgment before you know starting to batter him because I think. Fans that thing where you know we we, we want to you know you want to you want to slander a player you, know, you want to have your jokes but 
I'll give him some time. You know, I, I want to I see what kind of player he is, first of all, because from what people told me in the summer, I haven't seen the, some of these things, but I need to actually see consistently, you know, the run of play to actually understand what, what kind of player he is. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Babs. I think the technical level, based on what I've seen so far, looks good, but I need to see more than what is like, was like five games, he's, six games? I he's not up to the speed. He's not up to the speed of the print at all so far, man. I think he, he he's trying mm. to do some of these things that will come off in Serie A. And it was one of the things that you know, we've yeah. done on the scout report that Shab said is like, some of the stuff he's trying, you're not going to have the time to do that mm. in the Prem. Mm. Mm. And ultimately, like, he needs, man. yeah, he, like, me, he is quite think, as well, like physically, yeah. like body wise. He, he, he probably, yeah, this sort of, he probably needs to lean up. Um, I think he probably needs to leverage his size a lot more, um, than what he's doing at the moment. He's sort of playing small smaller than he is like ultimately you're a six foot three guy like you've got a really like stocky build like you should really be able to you know hold the ball up a lot better than what you're doing like it's almost like this is this is the prem now you know like let's be serious let's not you know trying to do some some flicks around the corner and all of this because <laughs> yeah, honestly, let's, 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 let's not get the pissy off <laughs> yeah it's honestly <laughs> it's, it's honestly it's honestly the truth because Ultimately, like even if you think other leagues are better technical quality, this and the other, this is the most intense league. You're not going to have the time to get your, you know, flicks and tricks off. Let's play properly. Let's play like men. Let's look after the ball, you know, and let's let's you know let's let's be serious here. I think that's I think that's what someone needs to tell him. That's that's, that's and cut that hair, brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to have what? that kind of chest you need to be a Corbin Blue. Pete Corbin Jordan. Blue. Musical said that on like the second episode of Muga, like if he's not able to keep it cooking, that like, hairstyle's gonna go to a high fade, my guy. Like let's keep it really, 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 <laughs> let's keep it really, really clean out this here. End, like like Callum Hudson Odoi, yeah, he locked in once he once he cut it all off. <laughs> Listen, I can't wait. I can't wait for uh, Babs's high fades run. I can't wait, man. <laughs> Uh, there's like, yeah, that, that, that's it, man. <laughs> there's like 15-20 more questions. You you guys have been top class, stayed on for over two hours, so we're going to call it there. Anyone who didn't get their questions answered this week, submit them again next week. I'm not even going to pretend that we're going to answer them during the week, um, so submit them again next week. But gentlemen, as always, a pleasure. Dr. Mike, Hall of Famer, brother. Yo, yo. When I spit bars in a rave, man, I go hard, left hand, hand.